Uh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being patient with us here in the Vici Gaming versus V5 series. Uh, and as an update for you, we've gone through two Corona breaks and we are waiting to get another update here. Welcome back to the desk. Jimmy Preacher Fu and Brento Raz Muhammad has joined us. Welcome, good sirs, to what is a pause to look deeper at Vici and V5. Yeah, I mean, look, how about you look deeper into my eyes? I said <laughs> I was going to do it. I know chat's looking at it right now. I made the point that I'm going to find myself on the desk. I know you guys, much like, you know, my presence at the MSI desk when we went through a hellacious pause. I remember, yeah. Or actually happened a lot last year. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I know a lot of people out there will remember LPL 2018 where it just felt like before every game, there was always a break in champions. It was left. you and Frosk as well. It was that day when like we didn't have a play by play. It was you and Frosk at the desk. Going weeks. Through that. Yeah. Sorry, there was weeks. actually. I felt like there were two weeks. Mm. In <laughs> fact, I remember having this discussion with like Frosk, the producer, and all of that. We we're like, okay, how do we best utilize this time? And the idea is, how about we have more of a podcast feel? Like, how about we just sit down and have a discussion more so about like the league itself or yeah. something that pertains a little bit more to the series? And so. I like the fact that you guys were focusing on specifically Ian picking up the Quinn. And I think it's a worthwhile discussion to have. I know yep. a lot of people are talking about the itemizing, but I want to talk about the matchup a little Please. bit more. Because Ian brought in the, the, the champion last time around going up against the Silas, or at least he wanted to. Last champion select, he wanted to go into it. Uh, enemy team just decided, actually, no, that's going to be a Jace mid. And it's going to be a Silas top. Now, if you're watching Fnatic or any, literally any team that decides they want to throw their uh, pick topside, you know, last time they didn't do that. This time around, they got the matchup, and this time around, they swapped it top lane, yeah. and you're really seeing the beneficiary of that one towards Ian. So I like the fact that we're getting an honest review of it this series. When you prioritize someone like Ian, and Korn doesn't come into the series so far, as far as we know, and you look at the mid lane matchup, and Chalitz is suddenly the rumble going into the Nico. Is it like a sacrificial lamb piece where you're like, well, throw him to the wolves and see how he comes out when Ian has a better matchup himself. I was about to say that it's actually primarily just for Ian and the matchup, but it's really funny because I wanted to focus in and actually talk about the uh, the keystone that he decided to take. It's a uh, it's a phase rush, yep. which isn't really that strong when you go into the laning phase. It's only really for the team fights and for the pick potential as well. So I maybe wanted to get your opinion on that as well. I thought that it was primarily just to actually bust around once you get the burst damage down in the team fights so that you could reposition without necessarily channeling your ultimate. Well, you don't need the extra bit of damage from either press the attack or or really anything for that matter because of course not you only do you have the long uh, uh, the the proper matchup harrier procs are going to help you out too actually one of the biggest problems of a quinn is when she's able to get on top of a target they either flash away or you essentially need that extra bit of movement speed so i think that's great it kind of reminds me of early Xin Zhao when he was getting a lot of picks uh in spring split right sure. and a lot of those problems that Xin Zhao faced Generally, those champions type of faces that when they get the early bit of like burst damage, especially in longer lanes, which is what Quinn likes to utilize, uh, you know, they don't get the most out of it. So thankfully, we're seeing it here. I like the pick. And it kind of reminds me of like back when I was a, a, a coach, I think it was around 20, uh, spring 2016. Um, the top lane meta was legitimately Quinn versus yes. Malphite. And so Quinn versus Malphite was the most hilarious matchup possible because Quinn dominated early. Guess what happens if Quinn can't get through her windows in the mid game? Malpha just smash. Yes, and then of course the 20 minute mark around Baron buff, and you can't really make use of your slide lane push if they're just grouping on Baron. Uh, I'm really pissed off <laughs> <laughs> that VG Gaming have decided that they're going to be util utilizing this. Hmm. Because if we're talking about two teams in this series, and the reality is both of them are struggling. I don't care if it is week three, both of these teams for the past two splits have had issues and victory five no more than anyone else yes. Lo you like just losing jinu is going to lose them pieces and so for teams that are trying to get wins right they need to be able to push out and realize their developmental team they need to be able to like utilize the best uh points of their window and i'm talking about a team especially the, an ldl team from victory five to just start growing making the best options uh, like in terms of mid game, trying to be as disciplined as humanly possible, and I think that I think they're making the best uh, uses out of it. The only I issue I have with them on that mark is that I think swapping people between both mid and top lane isn't the most reliable thing to I go through. I agree with that as well. Yeah. Uh, but Vici Gaming, last thing I'm going to say: trying to utilize Quinn and going through her early windows on side lane, just so you can like see if you can get a pick through mid or something. That they already had a problem of utilizing mid, their mid game. And now they're doing that as a sacrifice of their late game team fight. I'm not a fan of that. 
Uh, game one that we saw, they didn't even get to that when he got stomped in lane. Yes. They have a chance now when they're struggling versus Victory 5. So I'm not too uh, happy with that. Even look lackluster when they were pushing in with the Baron buff as well, because obviously you want the one for Quinn is, uh, Quinn is fed, so obviously you mm -hmm. want it in a side lane, but then getting picked out by both of the two solo laners, it didn't look too good. I mean, you take an Ignite. Like, he's going to run at you either way. You get to the big game, like, well, let's get something started. Yeah, so both these teams, I know they have higher aspirations when it comes to uh, their chances in the split. And they're not bu they're not fighting, they're not skirmishing to be like, all right, are we going to be the uh, the highest portion of like OMG, Victory 5, Vichy Gaming? They want to actually die for a playoff mm -hmm. spot. And I don't think either of them are really uh, doing it. <laughs> uh, they're not looking good. Wildly. I think if I'm Victory 5, what I would love to see is Alias in the top lane, Mole in the mid lane, and then try and just keep that as their core, uh, you know, solo laners. Because when, when we've lost so many elements, and further to your point before, where V5 have lost Junior, which is just such a big loss, considering you look at him now on EDG and you're saying, this fantastic. is, yeah, he's playing absolutely fantastic. Yep. Now in the top lane, you're running someone like Mole, you want more stability. That seems to be, to me, the biggest point of V5 is that they want more of that stability through Mole. Yeah, if they could keep him on the roster. In the right role, potentially, yeah, as well. Yeah, so, like, a lot of people will forget. Mole has been in the LPL. He's been in, in BLG. And that team was a playoff team. In yeah. fact, when they made that choice of taking Athena out and taking out the jungle option there, too, and they kept it, they put in Chieftain and Mole. What did we all say? We said that was fabulous. Yeah. They were playing well. Early game, mid game, fantastic from BLG. Uh, but then, of course, they had their fault, their failures in playoff time. But I still felt like Mole was the talent you want to push. That's right. Let's see uh, the next split. Exactly. This split. <laughs> yeah, this, <laughs> this split. This is the split. This is the split. Ooh. There is no... I'm not talking 2020. We have a whole lot of problems then. This is the split. This is the split yeah. that Victory 5 should just sit down and say, you're going to be the man for the team, for yeah. the organization. And he was. Week 1. Remember, week 1 he came in. And we're like, hey... Mole is V5. Like, he is the new identity of this team. Suddenly, they're like, hey, have you seen Windy? Have you seen <laughs> Ali as in, in a new duo? Like, what's happening here? And to be fair, all those problems, Jimmy, you're going to say this? I, I was about to say it. Those problems go to the wind when they beat down in Victor's did, Gaming. Yeah. But you got to get those road tinted glasses it's out of here. It's a temporary fix. Oh. Like, it, is, it feels like a temporary fix. What I also want to touch on, though, is... Who exactly do you put into the top lane? Obviously, you can put in Alias, Alias, but why would you not also take Windy? I mean, it's a good little flex. Because Windy's a mid laner. Yeah, like, that's but what he is. everything is so flexed so right now in the meta. It, you are flexed if you have uh, veteran players yep. that are strong talent. They are neither of the bunch. You actually just need direction. And so a lot of the, that's a problem that a lot of teams face is when they see so many strong upcoming players, and on, and on top of that, they all have different champion pools that they rush to put them in, you know, uh, drag and drop whenever they can. A lot of the problems, if you just don't have the synergy instantly placed on the team, and you have players that are confident in their roles, they've done it numerous times in solo queue and practice as well, and then you put them on the field in either mid lane or top lane, guess what? That actually just completely jumbles up. So I think if this is their plan for years to come, then okay, at some point you're going to have that synergy. But for one split, hell no. So I think that's... I, you're going please. for the temporary fix right here, but I, I'm not that's quite... Not even, that's more than temporary, too. <laughs> I'm just going to say, if you take a look at Alias, he plays primarily Nico. if you take a look at his uh, previous games within this split. And uh, well, what exactly is he doing? Because his engages weren't really that great when you take they a look at bad. them. That's all set up. That's yeah. a team play. If you're playing Nico with Glacial Augment, a lot of the times, you know, you're setting up for the team so you can get through. Or uh, you're also coming in on the flank. That's what makes it the best options as well. But uh, the only teams that we've been actually able to see the most out of them are literally the top three teams in the league. And if you're able to do that, a lot of them, it's because they can set up vision control, keep it there for about four minutes time, other than, like, uh, issues that we see from our, uh, uh, you know, bottom half team is just losing your vision controller, fighting too uh, often, skirmishing too uh, frequently. In fact, this game should be a pretty clean. Like, after the first five kills, they're just going on towards the, uh, uh, the you know, Ian, it should be over. It like, should be, he, should got, be. he got his six. Like, well, just Put yourself on side lane, abuse the side lane matchup, get a teleport advantage, find yourself moving, uh, you know, grouping towards the team to get an, like, an even number uh, fight after the four second teleport comes through. Like all those issues should be pretty clean dusted, but that's not the case. And so uh, 
say your, say your piece. I was going to say, it's a little bit of a punishing factor when you put them into the one for your most fed member is off on the side, mm -hmm. and then two people go to intercept him. The rest of your members have no goals, so they can't even force but the isn't, inhibitor isn't that, that the point. most punishing part when you have the fed member in the side lane? Like, that is the most crucial part because you can't deal but, with him. But no the, one can kill him. But then the question is, if you send multiple members to him, what do the rest of your team do? They can't even go and take the free inhib without a turret. They can't because everyone has to happen. do with him. Didn't happen. You're just looking at me like a death. You set. guys are going so <laughs> down into the depths right now. Here we go. We are. I, I do want to break down a little bit further though of Ian because he seems to be like the hot topic at the moment. The build is Blade of the Ruin King into GA. Obviously, he wants to get in the middle of a fight and die, right? But more to it, he's pretty safe in the sidelines. Yeah, so infinity edge. At the end, uh, third the item, end. right? So he, he scales a bit, Raz. But break it down further, because I, I was expecting to see Dust Blade. I was expecting to see Lethality Quinn. Uh, I mean, the problem with Lethality... Uh, and I think this is a great discussion, because a lot of people had that question mark. Uh, I also expected Lethality Quinn. That's what we, the predominant picks that we've seen if the Quinn's come through in mm -hmm. the first, like, whenever we've seen it in the meta. Uh, but a lot of the problems with Lethality, not only do through all those patches, it did get, like, chipped at and nerfed at, but also, if we're just talking about having uh, late game options, if it's in a side lane, certainly you want to have Blade of the Rune King. Yeah. Uh, actually, just a necessity on that one. And I think it's just a better like way to match up in uh, later portions of the game. So that's I actually I completely support that. I think that's the best option there uh, for Ian. And I think if we're just having a discussion, and I think my focus would go towards actually um, VG Gaming rotating mid lane, uh, because I still think that the reason why they're putting him in is because he has. Uh, these early game picks. Yep. And that makes it so Vici Gaming has a lane to play through. They need a lane to play through. I think they had that idea when Puff came into the team. And so he, uh, uh, or Jay that is, Jay came in with his Lucian mid and all of that. But the problem was just purely execution. Um, so they bring in Ian. And I don't think they gave him enough uh, uh, time. Because now they brought in Korn. Mm. So I think the, like, I'm going to ask you actually on this one. Uh, between both Korn and Ian, who would you rather see uh, playing for the team consistently. I would like to see Korn play, mm -hmm. but I can sort of understand why they subbed him out because of his less than stellar. Obviously, it's to do with the uh, strength of schedule of the previous game as well. But uh, just looking at Korn, I think that he has the drive needed and also his champion pool really does fit the current To be medicine. fair, like I'll weigh in on this one as well. Against RNG mid, I thought he was fine. He was probably the most consistent member out of that series because RNG just absolutely shellacked Vici. Oh, wow. And Korn, he was there rise mid. He's like, well... At least I'm farmed. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What about that bot lane? That bot lane was also very secure. In a losing team, very but easy I don't, to judge. I don't, wait, I'm just going to come into this yeah, one. Yeah, please. To, to get down to the point, do you think Ian would do better in that series? Uh, That's it's, a no. It's, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Unless if you actually do, because like if, if we're talking about, because a lot of the things we don't see is, of course, what happens behind uh, closed doors with practice. Uh, and I'm not going to uh, knock Ian, because I come back to my point, is that I would like to see a team behind Ian because he escaped that same situation when they were yep. on LGD. UQ is of course the better mid laner in that bunch but I still think Ian brought direction when he came out with his Akali picks, sure. LeBlanc picks and I expected the same thing going back to uh, uh, this squad. Then they bring in Korn and I'm like oh well I can't I guess we're moving alongside. Yep. I favor Korn as well simply because what he did with Poppy Sports before they brought in Knight uh, and then when he went on towards Victory 5 Remember, Victory 5 versus Vici Gaming now facing his old organization. Yep. He actually played fairly well on that team. Uh, and a lot of the times, it was double threat between him and Jinu. So I still think the guy, he's very young, by the way. He's been in the scene for a hell of a I, long time. I still question how old he was when he was on Starhorn Royal Club for 2014 Worlds. Yeah, he's 21. So uh, the thing is, he still has a long career ahead of him if he wants to go in that direction. So there is no downside for him coming onto this team. And I once again, going back to my point, I think he starts with the squad. Uh, so perhaps they see the split as, once again, trying to figure out who mix and match who comes on the start to the squad. Uh, we're seeing that a lot around the world, especially for like teams like Echo Fox. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that this team is just saying, we need to find someone who is the flag holder for the organization. Yeah, but like, you, sorry, no, sorry. yeah, I was just about to say, you sort of have to pick a person and really just sub it in when you absolutely need to, though. It could be it could be nice to have him in practice. It could be nice to have him watching the VOD to say, hey, I can give you some points of criticism. But ultimately, you need a solid roster in order to just power your way through the entire split. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's, that's fair. Uh, it, it always comes down to, and this is the hardest choice for any organization, of who they think is the best performer. Uh, and so they're bringing in Ian. Uh, Either that or they're just trying to mix and match to see, especially in this series where they have uh, a best of three. Who's to say that they don't come in a game two, game three with a different uh, change on that one? Uh, I was just 
thinking while you guys were talking as well. Go for it. Uh, we have band pick available uh, that I believe can Throw be it brought up. up. So we do have an in-game pause. Just update anyone here. Chrono break happened. Still waiting on the results here. Uh, band pick. Was available, I was told. You're before. lying to me. I'm lying to you. I'm Not sorry, only sorry. are you lying to the audience, you don't about get it. The air conditioning. Hey, uh, there we go. It's, it's over there, Raz. All so right. have a quick peek. Uh, I wanted to break this down a little bit further and say that Yumi just has no champion portrait whatsoever. Uh, look further at the Trundle and give us a good chance to talk about why Trundle is being seen so much into Sejuani more plainly than just the subjugate taking away base stats and why this matchup seems to be more and more relevant in the LPL. I mean, you just literally kind of mentioned that. Is that, that it? Is it that, literally that, that it? In that's the it. matchup, that's a great uh, portion of it. Another point is, of course, just the effectiveness of Trundle Pillar. Uh, Trundle Pillar in major fights later down the game around Dragon and Baron is actually just has such an insane slow. Yeah. Uh, not only is it a great uh, 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 wall that kind of makes the team fight a little bit harder for the enemy team to traverse, but the slow itself makes it so, you know, higher uh, mobility champs like Lucian can actually just skirt off free damage. So that being said, it's hard to play around. Yeah. And I think that's why a lot of uh, people out there actually are very heavily against it. You can see great things when best, the best teams, uh, best performers out there can actually make it use of it. But when you see in Victory 5 in game one right now, a lot of it's kind of difficult to, to make the best use of Trundle Pillar. When are they grouping? If they're making the best flank come through. Uh, those are the issues that I see right now. And you're right about the champion uh, portrait there for Yumi. That I was is unfortunate. That's small. I yeah. mean, it wasn't even the fact that it, yeah, it is small, but I thought it was just a completely different champion altogether. Maybe they're putting skins in there. But no, Yumi and Lucian, alongside the Trundle Pillar, actually is just so uh, super difficult to traverse. Not only yeah. are we talking about the Trundle Pillar slow, we're talking about the Q from Yumi as well. Uh, we've seen some incredible games so far in competitive. Uh, one that I remember from the, NA, uh, from the LCS right now, uh, that is based around the success of this in mid game. Yeah, the Lucian uh, Lucian Yumi combo we're seeing a lot more preacher. I know also in this lane, like it was okay for Y4, suddenly he gets a quadra kill, chase down potentials there as well. And I was expecting after that quadra, after this this like mid game team fight, that V5 would start taking over with the window that they created. You know, it, suddenly. You're in a game where it's still about Quinn. Yeah. And can I also just say that that, uh, that window was also extended in the early game because of Ben 4. I'm going to go out and say it, and I'm going to say his Trundle game was very strong. He knew that he had the early skirmishes against uh, Sejuani, and his laners were also pushing. He get so a triple he could, buff. Yeah, he did also have all of that security. So going into the enemy jungle, stealing it away, and that was denied the whole way through. Got level 6 first, managed to get the dragon first. He knew how to push his advantage from the get-go, from that pit. Yeah, Ben 4 has actually been getting much better and better in the league. I think he actually vies right now for most improved player. Remember last time around it was XX. XX came in strong, and I think oh, he, like that was something that he was able to accomplish for himself. Uh, but then now for Ben 4, coming in from uh, BLG, problem that he had on BLG, not only was there a rotating jungle uh, yeah. position that he was a part of, but also didn't have much of a voice on the team, and so there was always an issue on that front. I think right now, not an issue, especially, I think, in fact, he's a the veteran for the team alongside Y4. So. Yep. It's nice to be able to see him get out advantages like the, the point you mentioned in the early portion of the game. And then the fact that this composition literally circulates around both him and his frontal pillar. And also Y4 who has been an uh, insane player since coming in from LGD. Like those are big points for this team that uh, comes through the most confident players. Yeah, it really does. So Ben for Y4, like stability on this roster in V5 and uh, still haven't heard an update here. So. Like that don't matter. It doesn't matter. That don't matter. S soldier on. Now we've got you here, Raz. You know, okay, keep going. Everything gets family-wise. I'm still looking at the stability of this team around Mole. Uh, question as to what happens in Game 2 and Game 3 after what we've seen. Because Mole, not in the great... Windy, not in the greatest position. Uh, but Say his name right. What? I can't... The, the top lane is mid. The mid lane is top. It's hard. Say, Wait, say your point. This man understands. I still think in this roster, we look at someone like Mole who's going to be coming through a lot more and more. But with Windy's previous performance, does it suddenly just become Mole in the top lane show? And that's where we go from there. Well, my my simple take on this is just if you ban away the Yasuo on Windy, then what exactly is he going to do? He hasn't really proven that he was what? asking me. Play Silas. That's all right. He just jumped hit it. it. Yep. Hit it. I was just uh, going to say. Uh, I think Alias is the person who's trying to play top lane. Are you, are you talking about them? I, I'm, I'm just, mid? I'm, yeah, I'm concluding that Mole just might replace Alias in the top lane. Oh, well, Mole is a great player. And I uh, remember in NEST, he actually had some strong performances in that one. So that's a good 
It's a good take. I just remember a lot of the problems that we see in here is that individual players coming through in the early games, like all of them have succeeded at some point. Mm. And so we should probably just talk about players from mid game going forward, the ones who are the most focused. Aliez has showed to me this insane amount of focus uh, as the games have gone on, specifically uh, in the, I think they in their previous loss. While they lost that game, he was the solo carry for the like 80% of it. Um, so my flag is behind this man. I'm going to support this per, uh, play right now. I'm sad, of course, that Jinu is no longer on the squad. Yep. But we take those L's, and I think Aliyah is someone who should stay in the top lane. Mole going mid, and Windy should take some time. Of course, eight, uh, Team 8 7 right now. LDL starting for anyone out there next uh, in two days from now. Mole should be on that. Yeah, he definitely should be. I am uh, excited. Preacher, sorry. We cut you off. You just sit oh, in the Wendy. middle going. Oh, I said yeah. Windy. That's what I meant. <laughs> Wendy. Oh, Windy. 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 Yeah. Uh, Windy should be subjected to teammate seven. What? Yeah. Played so well. Doesn't Were you not excited by the Yasuo mid? I'm excited. And then that excitement's gone. Do you, do you genuinely, just while we have you here, were you genuinely impressed by his performance as we're about to get in? Never mind, cut that. I think we're just going back in. Ladies okay. and gentlemen, thank you for waiting with us. And Raz, oh no, not oh, again. Oh, Hang on, oh. pause. Don't you dare take off that headset. We've had another pause. It's happened again. No! I think we... No! I, th I think we could play through that. I think we could. I think we could play through that. So I don't see no problems with that. Keep playing. So the Corona break was up to that point in the mid lane fight. Baron in hand of Vici Gaming once again. You think I'm you think I'm joking? No, we just They should keep that. playing. I'm pretty sure Ian's dead as well. I played an 87 ping. <laughs> Do you? Uh, oh, you played at home? Yeah, uh, back in Canada when uh, the server was in LA. LA. Uh, yeah. That was pretty large. It's and also we have bad internet providers in uh, in uh, Alberta. So. Oh, so similar to Australia. Is it still that? You guys just have bad internet across the country. Do you, do you have a server closer to Canada now? Yeah, it's in Chicago, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. How do you know that? You because live in Australia. Because they changed it ages ago. Yeah. You yeah. should know this but by now. No, I would. I yes, do not live should. in America. Does it matter? I live in Australia. <laughs> the you servers in Sydney. League of Legends. <laughs> to be fair, though, up till season three, I did play from North America. So yeah, everybody. And I like. I don't even know. Is that gonna make your case stronger? <laughs> actually makes it weaker. Yeah. Hell yes, it does. <laughs> Definitely does. Uh, we apologize once again for the inconvenience, but it means we have more time to kind of delve into yeah, Vici Gaming. Yeah, talk longer. Yeah, cool you, with that. You, can, you can start talking to me about Puff and Southwind. And what I was saying to Preacher before on the broadcast, why I was hyped about this team, I believe that Puff and Southwind have high ceilings. Let me elaborate on that because I know he doesn't like me saying that. Now, I'll let you talk in a second. Puff and Southwind are shaping up to be one of the best bottom lane duos. Yeah. Their statistics are there behind them, but just how you see them play mechanically. Like, Puff is an aggressive AD carry. He walks forward, which is always good. And Southwind sticks to him like glue. So, when we had discussions about who has high ceilings or not, it wasn't tied to Puff and Southwind. Okay, well, it should be. Because when you have... Yeah, uh, yeah, and I would agree with you. Oh, thank you. I'm going to go... Now we're going to have a discussion about Ooh. high ceilings. Okay. Because you always just say for players that we have never seen, like we've only seen one game Windy for. has a high ceiling. Uh, yeah, you can just say it because you haven't seen them. Yeah. So I just don't like that discussion around them. But I, I would go back to the Puff and so, uh, Southland point. They're just the solo carries right now for Vichy Gaming. And the fact that they get into team fights and consistently have such a weak front line, or at least players that don't understand their role. Yeah. I'm going to kind of throw uh, not just Chalitza on the bus, really. It was ZDZ as well. Um, no longer playing top lane for the, lean, uh, for the team. Uh, a lot of the times, when Chalitza actually came into the league, had weaker laning phase, got a lot stronger, actually. Uh, so he got better in lane. But the issue was when they trans uh, transferred that towards team fights and positioning around Baron. The man was auto attacking turrets when the team needed yeah. him to step up forward or front line. The man was you know auto attacking the Baron when he the man needed to be front line for his AD carry. Please front line for your AD carry. Puff, we showed that stat last time when they faced uh, RNG. That was a great stat line where he is not only pumping out an immense amount of damage, but uh, you know. Uh, the CS per, uh, per minute that he's able to come through, his laning phase is incredibly consistent. Yep. That so I agree with you holistically that Vici Gaming should play through Puff and Southman, and they have. Issue is, it's just not a, it's not a two-man team. That's true. It's a five-man team. Preacher, if I asked you on this topic, and, and you substituted people like Xiaohu, maybe Caster, and and uh, top lane. No, uh, you, you don't remember any of the RNG top lane. No, I was going to say amazing jam. Like, let's not do this. He put Lungshi Lung in there. There we go. Right. Yeah. Uh, or, Are you or saying you just transplant the transplant the mix bot lane and match in? anyone you want. Put the shy top or put like anyone else top mid jungle. Do you think that turns Beachy Gaming into a playoff team? Yes. Or even just the jungler, actually. I think Yodang has actually had consistently bad performances, uh, at least in the early game um, when they needed him. 
So I know you've been high on him, so I'm sorry. I, just, uh, I, I think the first 10 minutes, though, from Yodang have been pretty good. If you'd agree on that. For which well, game? For... Not this game. Yeah, not not, not the last game. Sooning series. Sooning series is good. Yep. So I like that idea. Uh, WE. I think Beachy vs WE. Anyways, you're not remembering but, it too but, well. But... And you've been trying to <laughs> pull this one along that you like Yo Dang. Yeah, I really have. Yeah. He's put me into it. He's so put me I think into a corner. I think the issue is, is when it comes down to Yo Dang, he is definitely a great uh, 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 upgrade mm. from Ike's. And Ike's came in at least having a strong first five minutes as well. Issue is more so of understanding uh, when you're lane, and I'm specifically talking about top lane because I think a lot of the time now, not only is Chalitza has had rough times individually. But when he does have advantages, the jungler doesn't actually come alongside yes. them when they have a top lane a, like wave coming in. And I think a lot of that time comes down to A, communication issues between either the top lane and jungle, and just strictly speaking, jungle having a, a bad beat on the map because get, he gets caught out quite a bit. He does. Specifically in the RNG series, he got out uh, a lot. And I think that's, sure, a bit of an expectation, but it hasn't been too good uh, for the majority of the series LPL so far. team's ability to play up has always been a, a, a big expectation that we've had. Especially with a team like VG Gaming, how do they perform against RNG? How do they perform against FBX? You know, the, the top tier teams to show that they do have high ceilings. If Pup and Southwind can play well against Uzi and Ming, which I, I'd say in laning phase they did, yep. then you say, right, we can give them a high ceiling. We can say that they have expectations to grow. I mean, everyone, the high ceilings is there. They gotta keep playing to it. And I, I agree with you on that. It's just more so uh, the structure around it. And I think the structure facilitators like Top and Jungle, something that they can improve on, even if it's just through play, right? If it's just through waiting and giving them experience, Yodang certainly needs experience. We saw him uh, actually last year as well. So he had that little bit before coming right back now. So him, Jungle, a little bit more time on the field, and I think we'll get something right. Yeah, and I just have to go back to your point. You were saying, what about if we transplant all of these people out? Well, we can't, and unfortunately, it is just the we bot. We can't, yeah, for it now. Is, yeah. It's just the bot lane-centric meta, right? I mean, like, sure, you can play around that, but what happens to the for rest them, of yeah. your solo laners? And, of course, Yodang. In this game, I think that he really highlighted the fact that he knows how to play when he's behind. He doesn't take any of the fights. He plays safe to the point where he can't be caught out by the enemy team. But what does that mean when you're behind for the entire game? You just make no plays. You don't group up with the rest of your team. He had some good ultimates, but he wasn't frontlining. He wasn't really tanking it up for his team. And Which player are you talking about? Uh, your deck. Okay. Especially. Yeah, yeah I, would ag I would agree with that. I think he's forced to come to the bottom side of the map. In fact, in his best moments in, in the RNG series specifically, was when they picked a strong bottom lane and allowed him to play through that uh, and give him the Jarvan. Worked out well for him. Uh, I think that's something that could be a consistent force for them. And now, speaking to the meta point, right? It is hell, hell no, it's not the bottom lane meta. But for this team, it's forced to be that kind of like RNG. RNG is a little bit more flexible, but uh, for this team, it seems like they need to be bot side for a necessity. Yep. Um, and I think that's the reason why the acquisition of Ian and Korn makes this team a little bit more of an X factor, question mark. Um, you like to bring us the stat, like the idea that this team has always hit that third game, right? Yeah. Not always, but no, high chance. I mean, against RNG, it kind of broke it before it began, yeah. this split. High mark that they get to that third game. And then they have that, that win rate in the third game of last split, two out of seven or two out of eight. It's I very it was bad, exactly. It was bad. Now, there's a good reason, like, there's half and half of this. Half of it is the, you know, better teams in the league take don't take them seriously in the first game. They lose out when they have to, you know, go to three, right? So for that one, it's a little bit un uh, of an unfair statistic. But to the portion for a lot of those games where you look at it, it's like, hey, these are middle of the pack teams where they can realistically actually take these victories. Problem is, uh, once again, if you have that one lane to play through, it's 100% uh, Makes you <laughs> easy one, to predict. One dimensional. Yes. In fact, that was the major concern for a lot of teams that have that identity. That's what we kind of throw uh, fling uh, rocks at. Use that one, that's PG. Uh, to RNG when they went to International is that when you have that identity, people understand that. Teams like Vitality will just say, okay, Scion top Shut lane. Shut it down. Scion top lane level six, I'm just going to go run bot lane, right? Yeah. It's like suddenly it's just that you create strategies around it if that's your major uh, uh, point of strength. So, Korn and Ian resolves that. At least that's the plan. And I think that's uh, something that they can continue to push forward for. So do I think they're a playoff team? I don't think so, but we still have a hell of a long time throughout this play. That's why we're giving them the identity of developmental team for each And they have a lot of time in and this pod. They have a lot of time to think, to think about it. <laughs> they can't discuss amongst themselves, 
but they can start thinking about their roles on this one. And try and converse mentally, apparently. Uh, I have no update. I've just been told there is no update. That is the update. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that is your update? That is my update. I wish you. I got those updates. I just, as soon as it gets something in my ear, I'll, I'll let you know. But Do they have a long pause in between? There's an update? There's an update, yeah. And then There's they, no update. They, <laughs> they give you another <laughs> half an hour. Uh, so this is actually the first time. This is the first time in 2019 we've had a, a Corona break. This is the first time in 2019 we've had... How fun is it? Long pause, yeah. Is it fun? So you said in 2018. You said yeah. Yeah. Oh, that you was lock a yourself less. into stuff like this. Yeah. No, wait a minute. Yeah, that was okay. a, I don't know. I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't yeah. very enthusiastic. Yeah. There we no, go. That's, that's, that's a more me. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm a, talking about. That's a more me. Yeah. Welcome to the team. Hey, uh, while we we'll, we'll take a step back because I like talking about how Vici Gaming play and predictability. I'll call it. Uh, I like that. Still to this day, you know, nine, eight months. How many? Seven months. It's been six months. When did we start LPL? What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> we started Five LPL in, on January 14th. Yep. What, what's the date? June? Yeah. June 16th. Mm -hmm. Right? It's been five months. Six months. <laughs> <laughs> what is been, your point? My point is, six months later, Vici is still 10 minutes in, invading the blue buff, playing towards the bottom side. Their predictability is the same. Corn or no corn, Ian or no Ian. I'm still seeing the Vici gaming that have changed elements, but it still is predictable. Well, I mean, oh, no, wait a minute. We're talking about, like, what their soloing strengths used to be. So yeah. if we're just talking about playing to the bot side, that's not a problem, right? That's not a problem. The problem is their mid lane losing, and so if, you're, that's your, if that's your style, and you're going to the bottom side of the map and you don't have a mid laner, you just lose. You're always at a yeah. numbers disadvantage regardless of your bottom lane uh, matchup. So, like, regardless of that, we just need to see individual players on this team rank up. And so... You know, that was a criticism, actually, of more so uh, Jay. Jay, who is their primary mid laner. I mean, Jay didn't win lane. Exactly. And well, that's, that's a, that, that sounds like a blanket statement, but that, that's a fair statement. Yeah. And so that's the motivation for uh, the new mids. And back to that point, why it will change if they go back to the same strategy and will have someone who actually has pressure and priority through mid. I definitely wanted to point out the predictability factor, and I, I probably just lost myself on the date because I realized it has been five months, so it's been a, a bit of a while. So wh what about V5, though? Like, for both of you, what... Because after watching IG vs V5, I got excited. I got pulled in a little bit, as I do, you know? Pup and Southwind play well. I go, wow, Vici, top tier. Now, V5, they beat IG. What pulls you in going, you know, future against Vici Gaming? And uh, both of you predicted Vici, by the way. Oh, sorry, V5. Yeah, look, I, I have to say, I'm hot and windy, but now you need to actually see the future. You can't just say he's a great Yasuo player. You have to take a look at it and say it's a mandatory ban. What else can he play or what else can we put in our repertoire, especially a mid lane, in order to take him down into the other lanes as well? Because that looks like one of the focal points to play on for V5. Uh, I mean, sure. Like, that's a point we've hit on a lot. I think something we should talk more about is just like, because you've talked about the hype factor, right? Yeah. Uh, about... Um, both these teams primarily victory five. Mm. So where do you place them? End of split. Oh, here oh. we go. Where do you place them? <laughs> here we go. Thirteenth. Right. Okay. On top of, because I know every go. time you don't know. Raz asked me where I put things, teams, things, whatever. Right. Then I have to do the whole list. Because I don't or at least like band. have something yeah. in order, so, so, so you don't immediately change Are they better than Vici it. Gaming? Oh, he's doing oh, the thing. Yeah. Really? Are they better than Vici? Well, I don't know. This series probably tell That's me a lot. Sure. You can know. You can say it. Doesn't matter if they beat him 14. here, of course. You have no, to look 15. Are 15. they better than Okay, it doesn't Dominus? matter. You basically said 13 to 15. How much did that actually yeah. change? Okay, all right, all right. Let me, let me start. Jimmy, yeah. you haven't said anything. What? 15. Right? Are you going to ask me more questions? Yeah, I was going to say, like, is it Dominus? Are they better than Dominus? Is that the question? No. No? So you place them as 13. You're going. In um, I, I changed my Jimmy. mind. It's 15. Okay. I'm like LG. Jimmy, what them. is your placement? Oh, I'm gonna say solid 14. Oh, okay. there we go. So, see, as excited as you can guys can get, right? It's not <laughs> a bad thing to be excited for a squad. Mm -hmm. The reality of, of course, is is the difficulty of lagging behind teams that actually missed the playoff last time round too. Last time round, BLG missed the playoff. Yep. Sooning missed the playoff. Yep. Uh, and of course, uh, a lot of those issues that LGD has had in the last split seems to be largely resolved and a playoff run is actually just difficult it is not only are the eight playoff spots but you just have 16 teams so and they have new rogue cut. warriors coming in as well who exactly. will not fall short by the looks of exactly it. so my hot take and i had that point uh at uh beginning of the mid-season coming back from msi that i thought that rogue warriors would be a playoff team and you know that's that is an issue for a lot of people that believe that team w will stay in there right 
a lot of people that would believe that Dominus keeps him there. Of course, that just means one spot has to be bumped out. And I had, uh, I think, ooh, I have to check back now, but I certainly had BLG and uh, uh, Rogue Warriors in the, in the mix. I had yep. them in the top eight. So that's why I'm wondering from both of you guys, who do you have specifically from you? Do you think that it remains same strength during the summer, or do you have a hot take on that one? Well, are you asking for my top eight? No, yeah. just the team, because that's... If you want to do top eight, you have nope. it all settled. No. Nope. Okay, then say a lot team. of questions. You're, you're talking about V5 right now. What? Uh, what? Are you? Okay, you're not listening. No. To Which team do you think can get into the top eight right now that a lot of people don't? No, don't yeah, I, so. I would agree. It has to be Rogue Warriors. Okay, we, oh, you just so you think Rogue Warriors are getting there? Yeah. Okay, suddenly my take is not that hot. Okay. What, what about you? Th they look so hot. solid. Have you seen the uh, reinforcements coming in from top and jump? Well, yeah. they've had a very tough schedule, so yeah. they haven't been winning. <laughs> but. It always comes down, even the, the next series versus uh, Top Esports ain't going to be easy. Part either. of me wanted to troll and say OMG, just because I know it would probably annoy you. Yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think OMG is great. Uh, but LGD. LGD, you think LGD, that? yeah. That's a good call, actually. Yeah. I like that. As, I long as, Mystic, that. as long as it's still Mystic and Missing. Great. Team WE is Mystic and Missing. What did I say? You said LGD. Oh. LGD, what I'm so sorry. Kramer, I'm so What's sorry, ladies and gentlemen. So it's been long! So do you still think that LGD are going into playoffs? WE getting in playoffs, brother. Oh! LGD. LGD in playoffs. Oh, you yeah. think both? Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm just keeping yeah, yeah. that. Just that keeping is bold. That. I love how confidently I said Mystic and Missing. Well, you just and I'm like, <laughs> what did I say wrong? I'm like, that's the bottom line of WE. Yeah, you're just yeah. confusing the hell out of no. me and everyone out there. But, uh, and you said both. A, but what? We go back to LGD, though. Um, LGD is an interesting one. A lot of the problems, and I would agree to this. I don't know if I don't think I had them in my top eight, but I think that there was a lot of pushes to actually get them a lot stronger this split than last. I think their problems are still. Uh, if I'm rating BLG, I think BLG is a stronger team fighting squad than uh, uh, that team was LGD. Yep. And primarily, a lot of the weakness that I had for LGD is specifically in the top side of the map. Now, Doron got added, so Doron can change a lot of that. And I think Lies understands his role, and I think that's his major strength is that he comes in, he's realized that he's front line. He doesn't really recognize the laning phase. <laughs> and he tries to help out the team a lot of the times in mid game. And I think it's, that's ironed out. I agree with you on in terms of just like the veteranship of Condi is something you have to respect. Son of a fool. He is multiple times. <laughs> but he is an, a, a fantastic talent. Yes. And Kramer and Yuki, they're keeping that solid formation. And so I, I think that. Um, they're better. Uh, in terms of top eight, I don't have them. Not because they're a bad team by any but sense of their nature, but I think BLG and Super Every time good. we make these like hot takes and yeah, we yeah. start putting new it's teams, we got to kick. We got to kick other teams out, right? Yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll send this right back to you. Hot take of who will not make it, who is expected to. Oh, that's not. That's actually the weakest take of all time. Dominus ain't making it. But I don't think Dom. At this point. Our Dominus really expected to make it just because they made it last split. They made the deep run going up against uh, top esports after their victory. Yeah, but then they debuted against EDG at the start of the split and they looked absolutely... Yeah, but okay, that depends on when we're having that preseason expectation. Because then my preseason ex expectation was that Dominus wasn't going to be making it. I got flamed for that because Dominus won NEST, beat EDG in playoffs. Mm -hmm. That time around, Dominus was the expected team, the hot yes. up-and-comer. So if we're talking about right now, off the performances we've already seen of the playoff strength, uh, ooh, I would say if any team, if there is going to be a hot take, I'm not saying that I don't believe LNG won't make playoffs, because I do believe LNG are actually, I would change my current opinion of uh, LNG being like 12th place mm -hmm. and say that they would, but if there's any, the highest risk would be LNG. Okay. Uh, LNG as a team right now, I think bringing in Plex and Duan has bit, got them a lot of good but I still need to see consistency from actually the veteran players. Yep. That in the past, it hasn't been Asura's fault for their failures. Sure, you'd say Mala, uh, but when they brought in Fenfen, actually the major issues were more so towards SOFM and Flandre, inconsistencies yep. uh, when they're going up against teams that they should be beating, right? They look fabulous when they go up against Invictus Gaming and EDG. But then when they go up against mid-card teams, they actually start to struggle and they themselves had bad performances. So consistency for those two players, I still need to be bought on. But I'm kind of bought on them. A couple of series, I'd they look great. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, cool. it's all just a matter of the respect as well, the respect of the practice to make sure that they can get the, uh, the what is it, the... Uh, the synergy? Blanket on the word. No, no, it's not synergy. It's just uh, uh, to make Love. sure... No, discipline. 
Oh, discipline yeah, discipline. yeah, to make yeah. sure that they uh, right they can just make the plays that they always do. You know, especially early game focusing around the yeah. ways that you're winning. I always have faith in their coaching staff. I think their coaching staff is incredibly strong. Uh, I think the major issue of a lot of the times is that when their first 10 minutes come through, it's excellent, great, 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 and then something happens in the game like 20 minutes and that, you know, starts to like have to yeah, get your migraine yeah. going. Uh, but I still think, back to my original point, I am sold that they'll make it. What's your hot take, Jimmy? Because I want to know what out of Everything. And I'm not going to make it as hard as he tried All to right. make it. Going into this split, okay. get the bottom line what right, do you yeah. think was a hot take? Uh, I don't think that they're going to make it. Because even though they had a really good NEST performance, and I will say oh, that... Oh, Dominus. Yeah. yeah. I, even yeah. though Dominus had a really good NEST performance, I just... I, I don't see, first of all, the rebrand. I don't see the new team having enough time throughout just one split in order to... They had... I think one of their biggest faults coming in from the spring split was the fact that even if they could get leads, they just couldn't capitalize off it. They didn't Dominus. know how. To, yeah, they didn't. They couldn't necessarily play around the objectives. You know, like take a look at their Baron setups. Take a look at their Baron fights as well. So Those are the biggest questions for me. My thing on Dominus wasn't so necessarily that they couldn't set up for objectives. In fact, that was actually their primary strength was in team fighting and collapsing around uh, Chang Hong Scion. I think that the, that was pretty damn good. It wasn't it wasn't pretty, and no. I think that's a lot of people yeah. will come out and say that they actually didn't play it as slowly as a lot of the teams. It was very brute force, but they understood how to play through it. Uh, their control of top side was actually like impeccable. But my reasoning, uh, and this is, I'm surprised that you had them coming out as well, uh, uh, begin beginning of the split. I had it more so around individual players that I thought that Xiao Peng was a fabulous jungler. Oh, he was. I think he's uh, right now sitting at top three because um, I continue to have a lot of faith around Karsa. Yep. Ning's shaking my face. <laughs> but uh, in terms of just consistency coming in from last week. Which is curious, Ning and it's a great. further discussion one day that we'll talk about where Tian fits there and why he might not be top three. But Tian, I'd say, is right now performing better than Ning. So I would actually sub in Ning on that yep. one and still have uh, right now number But that's three primarily Xiao coming Peng. off of his last... But back to the point is that I think that Xiao Peng is a fabulous jungler and should be a primary carry for this team, and he is. Uh, same goes towards Mark. They're great facilitators, and I think that they should continue to do the job. But the issue is more so in the solo lane. Yep. The meta is so focused right now on solo lane talent, yes. you need to be able to at least have strength in one of those lanes. Um, problem is a lot of the issues towards Chang Hong. Because Chang Hong in the LDL, best top laner in that. He picks on every time. People weren't to death. Exactly. And this time around, a lot of times, even when he's playing flex picks, like early in spring, he was going towards uh, the Silas. I like the Cassiopeia. It was a good look for him, but issue of inconsistency of just falling behind in lane was yep. constant. Uh, that's something that I'm consistently worried about with him. Twilight has great moments, uh, but once again, solo laners need to have that consistent play. Uh, I think they don't have. Uh, we'll have to see, you know, how Gala ends up shaping up. Because a lot of this is relative. People may be high on these players, but if we're just talking about and comparing them to uh, teams that didn't make it, like Kramer versus Gala, or uh, if we're even hitting on... I'm not going to say WE, because I don't think WE is going to make playoffs on this one, but okay. I think that, once again, we go back to exceptional talent. The fact that there's even a discussion with Mystic playing in the bottom side of the map, yep. CA in the mid lane, like, you don't... Like, suddenly, talent in your lanes isn't necessarily, and I'm talking about the bottom side of the map, isn't going to sell me on it. You need to have strong solo laners to be able to make it past that initial push. And I think that's their current issue. But, uh, you know, it seems like they have a lot more issues than one you're alluding to. Their objective setup right now has actually gotten significantly worse. And that's, uh, that's, that's what I'm sad right I mean, now. There's a big question about Dominus. Uh, I'd like to add on to this topic as well. Give it to me. Whether you've actually considered JDG in or out. Oh, I still think they're in. You still think they're in? I still so, think they're uh, in. Then that comes to my hot take, just to add you know, insult to injury. I don't think JDG make playoffs. Yep. I mean, that's a very fair conversation to have. For me, it's actually more crazy to see that based off faith alone because I have a lot of faith in Coach Ohm. Mm -hmm. Coach Ohm is the type of person you've seen him consistently be able to yeah. take teams uh, as far as they can go. Uh, I think that we're currently seeing a lot of shaky points from this organization. And you'd start to look at some of the players like Yagao and say, well, he's not even close to performing well in comparison to like his and then debut performance. Just sorry to interrupt there. And then you, you look at someone like Flawless in the first couple of weeks, you say, well, that's true. what's going on? Although, last series against Suning, game one, one of his stronger points. But we've seen them get to that point before. And we see we, they are a finalist for a reason. Yeah. In fact, the only person I had issues with in terms of consistency was around Imp. And Imp and Lu Mao, I thought at the time, were able to showcase not only are they playing well within the lane, uh, but they can go back to the whole strength and team fight. So I have a lot of faith in JDG. Where would they be placed? My God, 100% it's going to be. I don't think they make the same yeah. run again. 
Well, uh, well that's, that's another discussion. I mean, but, uh, <laughs> like, no one thought they would make that same run. That's so true. you're saying that is the coldest take of I mean, time. the thing is, someone had a dream. You know, like Caps followed them. And that really pushed them over the they edge. They didn't win the finals. Are you superstitious? I mean, we're in China. He said they were going to win the finals and go to the Yeah, but he, what yeah. is this dream He took them that far. Him? I don't know. Maybe he didn't believe in the finals. Maybe he didn't watch the finals. That was the biggest issue. I guarantee uh, he was watching the race. He was, he was definitely watching. Yeah, he definitely, he was, definitely was. was. I mean, when you go 3-2, three, 3-2, two, three, two, three, two. sorry, 0-3. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was, and the, uh, for me, if we're just talking a little bit more about JG. Because once again, apologize for all the new viewers out there. As you can see, if you're watching the timer uh, up front, I will update on that as well. Because uh, I don't want to interrupt the conversation, but see, considering we're getting down to two minutes before we continue with JDG, uh, the match has had a big decision and it oh been, snap, it has been remade okay. um, in the middle of everything. So the match has been remade due to the issues uh, with the server, as far as I can tell. So it will be remade. Band picks will be the same, but they'll still go through the band pick, which is what we're waiting for. Then we'll get back into game. Uh, another full update for you a little bit later, uh, as soon as we find out more information. Now I'm upset with you. So People care a lot more they, about that they than do. what the hell we're they talking do, about. They do, but we, we have a quick moment to discuss this as well. Raz, band picks are still the same. The Queen has to come through again from Beachy Gaming. Uh, give me a, a, a quick spiel from you as to what you think is going to happen and what is going to change in this game. Uh, there shouldn't be any sorts of change in the early portions of the game. It really is just going to be a game about tracking the Silas, getting yourself in that matchup, having your jungler uh, rotate that lane, and then making the best of the priority. So it's not a cheesy pick. And I think if we're talking about like cheese picks, it's more so, oh, we didn't expect this. This is something that Ian has played consistently in his solo queue and is able to showcase to us right now already the previous series in this specific matchup. Uh, so I think they're just going to uh, try and play around that. My only concern is the, you know, Victory 5 is going to be able to see this. And obviously they're going to play a lot more control ways and try and isolate jungler. That's my only concern. I think uh, that shouldn't be possible. Do we still see the lane swap for each other? It's still like straight off the bat, same thing, predictability. <laughs> You would hope to see that it's the uh, it's the matchup that you wanted. It's going to be the Quinn into the Silas, unless, of course, it can actually be countered by the opposite side. So it's going to be a game of mind games. But more importantly, I have to say that this really does put V5 on the back foot because a whole lot of their success in the early game of uh, of the game that's now being remade was the fact that they got I mean, the triple uh, the three buff. It put both team teams on the back foot, Raz. Wayne. Timer's ticking. Time. Get, if I have faith in this timer... That it's gonna I go don't. down from 10 seconds this to is zero. A thing. This is why you have to hype it up. This That's is, your job. This is why I was comfortable saying this, Raz, because it says five seconds, but I don't believe the time or what. That's why you have to set people up for that moment. Or for that failure. You're a good coach. See, that's what I enjoy. See, you're a good coach. One day I hope you return it. Maybe I'll get some League of Legends coaching one-on-one -on -one from you sometimes. <laughs> set it up. Are you cheap? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, probably not. So, from the update as well, ban pick is being done. That is what the 10-minute timer is for, so I believe we still have a couple of what? minutes. I feel, like is, been, I feel like we've been baited. Bait. I feel like we've been that's absolutely why, baited. That's why I set you up for that one. See, this is why like, this is why I wasn't too fussed. You know, four or five minutes to, to get yourself back into this game. because got to build the for excitement. Me, for me, I'm going to tell you one thing. Both matches are in Shanghai today, by the way. So we're going... What does that have to do with anything? We're going for a long oh, night. Yeah, yeah, back, yeah, 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 yeah. We back, can't push the eject no, button. Is yeah, yeah, saying, yeah. You know? <laughs> back to back to back. Well, eject from Beachy and B5. Part of me is like, nah. They can make the trip to Chongqing. Yeah, that's right. No, they can't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, you can't. I was like, that's optimism. not an option. Yeah, no, that's not very good. Nat Cafe, everybody. Let's go for it. Anyways. Hey, uh, while, we still, while we still have you here, um, like, expectations going forward into Vici Gaming, does having a match resetting, going back into that game one, like game two and three, are the players, is this just going to be I'm a Ian, whirlwind? Deflated. <laughs> yeah. If I'm in, you got yourself five kills early, and sure, the last few, like, for anybody that actually saw how the game was actually moving in that direction the team fights weren't looking good for you no but you have your ball in you're six you and have one gold three you're items spending it your three items you have faith you can get back on the map and insert your will right now on side lane yeah but now you're back to zero zero and zero so uh still deflated yeah that's my that's my expectation my professional yeah. opinion uh, expectation pressure let's go Check deflated. Out that jungle as I told well you. yeah definitely i mean like everything's going to be watered out he's not going to get any jungle help i mean like there's there's <laughs> There's some kind of... Uh, let's talk about jungling a little bit because uh, I feel like we're just going to keep waiting. Uh, <laughs> like, the junglers now, isn't it the double... Like, the double play? What the hell are you saying? I'm saying you start a different side. You go somewhere else. We saw a vertical jungling set up there early from Ben 4. Mm -hmm. And he got triple buff. Yeah. Like, he, he got three of his buffs. Yep. Now, if I'm Vici Gaming, if I'm Yodeng, I'm like... 
eight vertical jungles last time. I lost my blue buff. Yep. Like, easily, you got already a starting setup. Yeah, level ones are actually fantastic to watch this meta, actually, because a lot of it is a mind game more so on, like, uh, getting early wards on Raptor so you get a first uh, camp on the con uh, first look at the connecting camp, which, you know, has changed from Scuttle Crab. Now it's moved from 2 minutes to 3 minutes 15, which means you're probably going from uh, red to Raptors, either to Krugs, mm -hmm. or you're heading out towards the uh, blue buff itself around that blue side jungle. Now you have a ward there, a lot of things can be seen. And the mind games is suddenly you're getting early red trinket to be able to clear that out, or you're sitting Whoa. in five man in bush. That's what yeah. RNG did, um, actually twice. Set five man in bush to see someone and be able to get a catch on someone trying to peek their head out. In those games, didn't happen. But if you're expecting it, you got played like you did in this game, I'm saying there's going to be a bigger uh, setup right now in level 1s. I think the team that made that setup to get uh, vertical jungling will not try for it once again. It's going down the rabbit We're hole. We're going down to boring. Yeah, like we'll, when we see this, you have yeah. to go back to standard, right? Because everything is caught out and when you're... Maybe. Or, All like entrances I said, are going to be spotted. the double trouble or the, the double double. You're just double. throwing words right now. It, that's what really I do. In Canada, it. we call double double, double cream, double sugar. What's that? Coffee? For coffee. Okay. So you better not be using that around me. Okay, so the double double, right? Stop. The bluff is by doing it again. Rabbit you would make you. this is that <laughs> guy. Okay, say it. All right. <laughs> Let's just the say there's going to be a good lesson. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you ever pay the price, the iron price for that solo queue lesson. Okay. Yeah. The iron price. Excuse yeah, me. I'm price. gold one. I'm a high. I'm. Don't even. I'm a good. Don't one. say it. Okay. Don't even try. Gold one. This has been a long way. However. I mean, like I was told. I told you the timer was a lie. Not even you outraged did, yeah. anymore. I'm just people in the production make a new timer. Don't even care. Put if the it's new correct. time. Put five minutes on it. No. Ten minutes. On it. Thirty seconds. Put thirty <laughs> seconds on it. We thirty seconds. Need... Thirty seconds to say the piece. Now it, you were right before, Raz. Like past, like VG and V5. We have to warm ourselves back up for this series. Um, now for me, like this first game, Puff was silently becoming more of the carry, and I know that Ian got the kills. But, like, Puff was coming through the fights. That's the three items I with QSS. Mm -hmm. And slowly but surely, like, that big scaling element for Vici Gaming was getting in good position. So, again, like, who's to say Puff doesn't get in a good position like he always is, and this game becomes more about him? Yeah, they were, giving him, they were giving him a lot of waves. And uh, that's one thing that I actually like about uh, Vici is that they give him time to pick up, like, bot lane waves whenever it's necessary and so he can rotate. If you watch a lot of, like, the games from previous splits, a lot of times they just pick up a fight expecting the AD carry to either be there or to be there on time. Like a lot of those questions are just really <laughs> real bad calls. But no, I think VG Gaming understand what is necessary to be done. Mm. Next game when we have the same picks, I would expect him to play up. And obviously, they just need to be able to buy enough time for him to get his third item. That's always a concern. Or two items. We're seeing a lot of uh, SS Reaver IE. IE, yep. So that's been the call so far. So I'm not concerned about that. He's going to be the weak side of the map. You shouldn't be playing towards him anyways. Uh, and I'm just talking about this game in particular. If you're going to be using, uh, uh, of course, trying to follow the Quinn lane, Quinn's probably going to be top lane. So you're going to have to be forced to play away from Puff and South lane. Sorry, Preacher, I know you're going to weigh in on that on Puff a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to say the fact that because he was left alone for so long, of course, you mentioned the QSS and also the ultimate in this matchup in specific when we're talking about the hard CC coming in between the Nico and also the Silas ultimate that could be uh, stolen Sejuani ultimate for instance those are only two hard points to CC so ultimate QSS you can dodge both you of those know what out. like the Sejuani was getting stolen you know what was getting stolen the most that game wow. was Alistar. the Alistar ultimate like the unbreakable will I'm yeah. going well why would that be stolen but then you look at the CC on Vici Gaming. Uh, not even just the CC. If you ask the players, uh, I've, I've asked the players a few times, or just like, what's their favorite ultimate to steal? A lot of times it is Alistar Ultimate. Okay. Alistar Ultimate, if you just be, are able to take that 50% reduction on it, it's actually just broken. So 100% your point about the CC uh, break, that's great. But a lot of the times, he's not making the best use of it. He's making use of it when he gets caught. That's never ideal, no matter what. To be fair, he's no 0 matter and 8. He wants that ulti. Yes, but like <laughs> no matter like, what ultimate you pick up, you can't criticize it because you criticize what he's doing. <laughs> uh, but the Alistar ult is actually an incredibly strong tool here for, uh, for Silas. I love it. Yeah, I really do as well. However, ladies and gentlemen, we apologize. We apologize for the wait. We're going to have a very short break <laughs> and then update you when we return here at the LPL. Thank you for waiting with us. It's a long journey. BG and V5 coming up game one right after this.
总有人上人，那便是我。能力的样子，像极了一只猴刚刚找到了棍子。感觉到风里的寒意，那就是我。他们根本看不到我来了，好丢人呢、啊。排成一列，我来让他们下跪。想直接是把对方的背上打残，背上这边交出一个闪现，往回撤。猪妹一个七字形的甩狙，看一下，大这边大招还可以，但是伤害不够啊！这是刚才一直在说的伤害不够。金库这边直接突入敌阵，女警这边拿到双杀，后续摧枯拉朽。这场比赛，方 plus 实在是太顺了。boss 这边又来了。嗯刚才你走得了，现在你还能走吗？直接脸探草，被打了一套，再打出一个被动，这样通过移速可以走出他的 W 进库。看一下，再用一个 W 技能减速一下，往前追着。哎，这一波进攻是很危险的，交闪，但闪现也走不掉啊，直接被 POSE 单杀掉。这波隔墙一个 Q 技能，司马老爹的位置。司马老爷这波失误了，他因为没有出水银世代，司马老爷倒下以后正面打起来了，并不是先杀掉了硬碰，而另外一边牙膏是被逼到了异食血，是微微的九桶上去逼他的，但是正面的一个乱战，我看不清楚血量到底是谁家的漂亮，阿布这边一个三杀是站在原地一个一个 A， 把三个人都给 A 死了。这边孤鹰币过来了。这边要动，看一下小天这边是有大招的，这边要怎么动？先看谁先手，拉到，晕住，然后剑魔这边开大招，一段 Q 没有命中，二段 Q 也没有命中，这边此刻只能交大招的 POSE， 一个大路就能挡大部分的伤害啊！这波 POSE 秀了呀又拉出来了，而且这波中塔要掉了 ，A 直接开起来，撞到的是舍蛇，蓄了一个 Q 技能，舍蛇先用秒表跪破第一波伤害，司马老爹的 W 技能也逼出中的一个秒表，这边 BB 这时候一出拉进去，但自己位置有点危险，赶紧反身一个腰带，这时候微微忽然闪进去，想要看到大王没有看到人，三王回队是推到了 Maple Maple 在正中间，只能把自己的伤害灌出来，最先倒下的是绿帽的一个光辉，但是这边 BB 的位置也很危险，司马老爹要先回头躲一下三王的一个 Q 技能，司马老爹这时候要跟三个人来对拼，他身上是没有飓风的，所以他点死了一个大后期，弗雷斯贴在脸上一个弗雷斯一板斧。加上一个一技能是，终于把司马老爹给处理掉，苏宁被打出了一波团灭Before we even start a project, we look at what exists and try to distill what about it do we want to keep. I think for the players that main him, they still love Mordekaiser, right? Mordekaiser is iconic to the game. He's like a walking fortress. Unstoppable wall of metal. smashes people. Gets the fantasy of being this sort of lord of death. From a visual standpoint and the gameplay, I think there's a disconnect. Like, we see the splash, you kind of think you know what his play style is going to be. And then in game, wait, am I a mage? Do I even use yeah. my mace? And so 
In the VGU, we really wanted to approach how do we make sure that through line is clean all the way while keeping at least the feelings and the elements and the things that those old players did like about the champion and bringing them forward. So when we pick a champion that we're ready to do a VGU on, we assemble a team that's the designer, a writer, or narrative, and an artist that we call DNA. Uh, the DNA pod sits down and talks about like, how do we take the old pizza feed Mordekaiser and make him look like a modern champion, but still immediately recognizable as Mordekaiser. We really wanted to focus on the fact that he is this indomitable warlord who's able to crush his enemies and capture their soul for his own purposes. This was sort of an earlier stage just trying to figure out the shape of Mordekaiser, what was the, the key visual motifs. And that's where we came up with the idea of making it like architecture. We looked at his entire kit very, very closely to see if there's anything we should bring forward, like the ultimate. Mordekaiser's old ultimate was he would kind of put a debuff on a target, and if the target died while that debuff was on them, then Mordekaiser kind of captured their ghost. He basically becomes a two-man army at that point. And though that is cool, it doesn't really fit with what somebody with a big mace wants to do. It still takes away from the thing that you want to do with him, which is to dominate people with Mordekaiser, not have Mordekaiser command someone else to dominate. We did try to bring the ghost forward, and by try, I mean we had it in for months and months. And at the end of the day, what we found was that the experience we were creating as a whole was sort of detrimented by having the ghost. So we ultimately decided that while it pained us greatly to remove it, that it would be better for the current kit to just not have that brought forward. Overall, we wanted to deliver on like the core of what we believe Mordekaiser to have been all along, which is this like death archon. In this particular case, I think you could represent Lord of Death anywhere on the kit, but the obvious spot to attack from is the ultimate. So it's with the ultimate that we're like, how can we create this story in League of Legends in a matter of seconds? So Mordekaiser's current background, Mordekaiser is interested in seizing the souls of the living to help him build the afterlife that he was denied. So he's constructing his own death realm. In terms of gameplay, Mordekaiser can choose a victim to bring with him to the death realm, and they are cut off from their teammates completely. So the death realm is just another interaction layer of the game. So I can't see anybody in the Summoner's Rift layer, and no one in the Summoner's Rift layer can see me in the, de in the death realm layer. So now all of the things about using my teammates, getting knockups or heals or stuns or all that stuff is gone. It's me versus Mordekaiser, Mordekaiser versus me. Well, another thing we wanted to keep in mind too is the opponent side of it. We didn't want this spell to just feel like a death sentence of Mordekaiser casts this on me, I just actually die and there's nothing I can do about it, which is why there's still a fight. There's really cool plays of flashing over a wall to get away from him, or if you are really crafty, kind of outsmart him, and having that goal can allow the enemies who get pulled into the death room to still have a fighting chance against him. I feel like with the update, this is a great opportunity for us to sort of reintroduce League of Legends players to Mordekaiser. And for the players out there who really, really like old Mordekaiser, my hope is that we have considered those players as much as we can, and that we have brought forward the best version of the champion that we can deliver to as many players as want to play it, like feeling like they get to be this Death Lord juggernaut. The power of the mace smashing their opponent, and then the ability with that ultimate to say to your opponent, there is no escape from Mordekaiser. Tell 
，让他们排成一列，我来让他们下跪。Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I have an update for you as we head towards Vichy Gaming in V5. Uh, we welcome your return, but we also let you know that players are resting backstage and hopefully momentarily will be getting their way back onto stage as we've had a double Corona break in this series due to an issue that has been reset. The game will be remade with the same picks and bans that originally occurred. So we're waiting again for the players to come through. I welcome back Raz and Preacher to the desk. I am Hysterics. And uh, gentlemen, this gives us a little bit more time. Yeah, and just uh, for con added context to you, this is my day off. Yeah, it is. Saw this was happening. I just realized. Welcome. Saw this was happening, and I decided I needed to, you know, good yeah. discussions happening here in a long time to have that Next talk. minute, you'll just see Clement walking through the <laughs> door. <laughs> you better not. We don't have enough space for Clement. I'm sorry. Should. We don't have a fourth uh, mic, friend, so you lost this race. Hey, so, so we... But yeah, I didn't get time to, uh, you know, dress up or anything. I got myself a good jacket. So good. I, I was in the Twitch chat not so long ago, and I ended up finding myself here. Look all right. I like the... Who's the head on your shirt? Perfect. Thanks for asking. So... <laughs> This, my friend, is Mouse. Okay. This is actually EDG apparel, but I thought it was a good cross between both that and Rogue Warriors since when I got it, Rogue Warriors were actually the team with Mouse in the top side of the map. Yep. So it's just Mouse appreciation. The man has retired. Mm. The man is long gone with both ties. To in fact, the last time we saw him in camera was when the Rogue Warriors went up against EDG. Yes. Yeah. And so when that happened, I was like, God bless Ooh. I have this shirt on at the same time. But then when I asked for my producer, this was like last year, uh, to put the camera on me so I can bring the shirt out. He was like, we don't have time, friend. And you know what? I don't want to see that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I added that last part. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, like, for me, I just love the style. It doesn't even look like Mouse, first of all. It just makes him look ten times more handsome. So, if I ever have apparel, do this to me. I mean, I only see one eye and half the head anyway. But it's a good there we looking go. shirt. Uh, so, I, I mentioned before we have a, lo a lot of time here, or at least partial amount of time. We don't know as of yet. Uh, when this remake is going to occur and when players are going to get back on the stage. So we have a bit of time to talk about the, I guess, oyster in the room, which would be Invictus Gaming and how IG have gotten to the point where they are now. Oyster. Yeah. yeah. And where IG are going in this split because at the moment, you look at IG and you're saying, are they playoff ready? Are they the team we expect? I'm looking at them and I'm saying not too good, especially not from the last series into uh, V5, where V5 took him to game number three and then beat them in game number three. I mean, yeah. beating EDG was a start. That was, yeah, was. the last series with that EDG series. So, like, I was, I'm actually on that track yeah. to begin with hmm. because I even came out with a video when I was discussing about Invictus Gaming because I wasn't too worried uh, since they had the same kind of problems that SKT and uh, Team Liquid have. Talking about the breaks and everything. Exactly. When they're coming back from MSI, they only had one week. One week while every other team had a good amount of time, but they take time off while at the same time understanding the patch through solo queue and scrim time. So I expected the first week and a half to be poor. But then came in a lot of the extraneous factors. One of Battleland not starting first and foremost until that last series where they came in with that success. Oh, yeah. And the heaviest one was, of course, the unfortunate personal circumstances that come through from Rookie. Yep. Of course, once again, Hearts out to Rookie. The man's doing a lot of good in this split. And, you know, you never want to have to deal with family problems like this. But at least uh, Forge right now, the uh, mid laner subbing in for the team is holding it down. So right now, back to that point, apparently they took down in, uh, EDG yeah. with Forge coming into the mid lane. I think that has been the biggest point so far of the LPL uh, summer split. Yeah, like the biggest question is, if you take out Balan, is that worse to the team than actually taking out Rookie? Because Forge actually managed to hold it all right, but the bottom lane between uh, Jackie Love and Lucas, that left a lot to be desired. Yeah, but I thought a lot of those issues, I think these are always uh, problems to have discussions about. Because yes, Balan is a veteran. He has a pretty good voice on what happens at the bottom side of the map. And there was one series in particular uh, where Lux was just smashing uh, their heads in oh, at the yeah. bottom side of the map. And that was actually more so Jackie Love picking that up. So I don't want to, you know, say anything badly about Lucas because Lucas came in under ridiculous circumstances. Yep. And I don't think he even performed that poorly. I think it was an instance where a lot happened and I actually pinned the blame primarily on Ning as a player. Uh, Ning came out last uh, series and ball. That guy did so much, actually. Yeah. And I thought that he was able to erase a lot of the issues that he had uh, during the early portions of this split. He didn't erase that TL series. And not only that, someone else came into fruition in that series, and rather game three. Yes. I think the Shy 
made his grand return for the split. Hell yes. Totally did, yeah. I mean, the early games here kind of look like he's not engaging, he's not doing damage, and he's not tanking either. So what exactly is he doing for the rest of his team? But finally, some good plays coming out. Specifically being on side lane, and this was a concern that I had at MSI, was that even in his good games, he was grouping too frequently. Yeah. But on the Rise game in game three, he found himself on side lane so consistently, he smashed laning phase first and foremost, right? Not only did they get a dive on top lane, so uh, Jinu was pretty much pinned under that situation, but he was able to be pushing his side lane advantage, and then when he finally grouped, he was let. He was actually one-shotting the Lux. Uh, Mako didn't have much of a shot in those team fights, so you're right. It's great to see the Shy back on the map because it gets all really awkward to have a discussion face to face with the international audience and say that the Shy is the best player in the world when the last month and a half he has been performing really badly. That's right. Like MSI is one of those in, you know issues you come in and you know he had that 0 and 7 performance like that ridiculous cannon performance they ended up winning that game but you could tell he wasn't taking it seriously in Victus gaming during group stage 1 and then the first instance you get into a best of 5 your team gets blown out. So they really needed to come out individually, and you got to see the Shy last series do that. just that. I think consistency is my only problem. And this is the good thing about seeing the Shy come back in, in form, right? Because before, when he was dominant in 2018, we were like, he can play whatever champion he wants. You legitimately can't ban him out. Now he has two really core champions that he's got on Rise and the Jace. He has been performing massively on both of those two champions. How, what do you say about a player who still has two really meta and really strong champions, and you just say, wow, this is the weakest he's ever looked, right? Uh, yeah, at least I think a lot of that comes through his focus and willingness to play, or at least uh, take a <laughs> take the weak side of the map easily, right? A lot of the times he doesn't have jungle pressure and he just kind of continues to run it through, uh, try and take those skirmishes and he just gets killed. So that's, that's actually my only concern is that uh, he would be incredibly disrespectful in weak side matchups. I do have an update for you though, Raz. You're when smiling. I hear good news, You're I hear smiling. good news. You're smiling. Apparently in two minutes, we will be starting the matchup Put of that VT timer up. and V5. Throw Put it, it up. up there. Throw it up two there. Two minutes? It's probably 157 by now. Yeah, look, Woo. it's already started. Uh, 150? Now, when you talk about IG, you got to talk about V5 because V5 is the team that took them down alongside, you know, some sneaky other people as well in there. So Invictus Gaming, like, put them aside for now, Raz. Because V5, man, they defeated them. Okay, but before we that, uh, I want to do some promotion, some, oh, please some nice do. LPL promotion. Oh, you want to... I'm going to promote our match of the weeks, or at least their best matches, of course. Yeah. So, uh, Saturday, which is going to be day five of the week, we have Top Esports going up Invictus Gaming. Yep. That's the match that we've been actually pretty much going forward, seeing if Invictus Gaming can keep their uh, slate really clean on that one. Of course, taking down EDG, we hope that's not going to be a fluke. Yep. They can come out and be able to take down Top Esports. That's going to be a great rematch for the semifinals. Match of the week. Gong. FBX RNG. That right. one. I didn't even I'm not, we don't even need to have that discussion. We can go back to, of course, your problems in VG Gaming versus Victory 5. Yeah. But keep tuned. Stay tuned for that one. Day 6 this week, Sunday. Put it on your calendar. Don't even tell me you don't have a calendar this digital age. Yeah, you're watching this on a computer. You're watching this on your phone. You have a calendar. That's my uh That's, that's my some good promotion work. Go that's for some it. good promotion work. Now let's F talk about it. Oh my god. Let's talk about I, it. I see the Dorito chip. Talk about it. Raz, Vici and V5. Same pick, same bands. Just to update you all, we went through hell and back with two chrono breaks, a Say rematch it. now in fact. Pick and ban it looks like, but it should realistically be us getting into the rematch of game one. Fresh as a burger from KFC. And respect to the Chinese casters, both Chang Mao and Wawa also holding it down. Hell yeah. You're not getting any gifts from me, but thumbs up and I'm gone. I'll oh, see you right. <laughs> okay. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Preacher and I will take Ooh. you through this once again, although it is the exact same pick and ban. I'm actually going to walk away from that because if Azai is banned, then I have been lied to, and I think we're just doing the full thing again. Wow, we're actually just going to redo it from the beginning. Question is, do the same core picks come out as well? I mean, Ian also has the Quinn still open. There's still a priority on okay. the Sejuani. You know what? It makes me more excited because if we're doing okay. this fresh, I don't think it was fair to run the Quinn like they did, to run everything as standard as they did in game number one. It is... 8 p.m. This match started three hours ago. We are finally here now, and I'd like to say everyone who is still watching, 
hearts out to you because you're the bloody lifeline here of the LPL. And normally we don't get to shout this out, but huge shout out to all of the audience members in there as well. I mean, you got to have some dedication to be in here from start to finish. Yeah, I mean, they might have had a good KFC burger themselves, but we'll get on with it, ladies and gentlemen. VG Gaming V5, game number one. Now, what we know already is that we've seen the Puff Zaya ban. We've also seen the Nico first pick, rather Yumi, first pick here for VG Gaming. Ooh. But the Sonar in response from V5 eludes me a bit more. Very interesting. And normally you would expect that to go to Y4 as well. Had that massive performance against IG, so we do know that he has it in his wheelhouse, got a quadra kill in that game as well. It really will be up to Max to see whether he goes for another poke champion as well, or whether he wants to go for hard support like the TK. Now we've seen it, yep, paired nicely with the TK. Good spot there, Preacher. Max has that in his wheelhouse available, especially when you take away his Yumi. Uh, as a side note, second game of Yumi here for Southwind, constantly being banned out against Feature Gaming, so now he has to run it into the zone of Tom Kench. This bottom lane looks quite juicy considering Puff gets his second best in the yeah, It's also very interesting considering that V5 ban off the Zyre and not the Rakan. That was something that was unexpected. But now that we move into the second part of the Pixel Dance, it's pretty much just uh, Man. just a solo lane as all around. I've never been more excited for a pick and ban. Just seeing Summoner's Rift is going to get me so excited as well. Let's get on it. Seeing, seeing pick and ban is like seeing Jesus, you know? He rose, or you know, whatever he did. Actually, I'm an atheist, but that's a long story. This, for me, is going to blow the house down. And uh, when you see the Nico band, you see the Renekton band as well. We're starting to focus on the flex pits and the top side of the map, and that's when things get even better. This is not an online dating profile. You don't need to tell the audience what you are. Right now, what we know for certain is that Akali is still open. That is the flex, and both teams can pick that. Another huge pickup is also Jace, which is not banned just yet. Yeah, it really isn't. Akali, the Jace you mentioned. Uh, let's also look at the other flexes available. Remember that Renekton being banned away is a flex in the LPL. One that Ian has actually played, so surprised to see that away from Beachy Gaming. The Silas, another one, which has made it to the second ban phase, and uh, <laughs> you can see Windy on your screen, looking pretty happy to be back in front of the screen. Now time to see what they go for. Now, Akali has been nerfed on 9.11, so her energy refund has been down, and her scaling on a Q is also down. Both of those two things heavily punish her in the early game, but people who are proficient Akali players can get around it, because it wasn't the biggest, and it's a scaling nerf, not a flat numbers one. Also, remember the Jace, the Shock Blast there as well, still taken away. All right, B5, couple of flexes left up and available off the top of my head. Uh, actually, I shouldn't have said that. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. Yeah, exactly. I think pretty much the only one is the one that I mentioned, but other than that, Ooh. it's up to comfort. Untraditional uh, flex. Untraditional, is that a word? Yeah, well, it's not traditional. That's not traditional it. would be a better way to put it. Uh, the Camille has been flexed here in the LPL as well, and of course across the world. Uh, we don't know if that's going to be Windy or Mole, but Beachy Gaming left with limited options. and. A pick that we haven't seen in a very long time is the Lissandra. It's because she fell out of meta with all of the flex picks, but another champion who fell out of the meta to counter her very nicely is, of course, the Zoe. So if Windy wants to pick that one up and actually send Camille over to the top lane, it is available for uh, V5 as a response. Time to see what VG Gaming do, because they have to show their lane either way. You've got yourself a jungler, you need a top laner, and Jax could just be the right element here to add to Chalitza. Uh, it's been in his wheelhouse before as well. And victory five now. We've waited this long. Give us a composition that can fight. This seems to be the way to go. Scaling element. Uh, you've already got the Camille. Vladimir, Gangplank, the hover between the two, the Akali also on the board, what's it going to be? It's a bold pickup as well, because for Vici Gaming right now, it is very heavily uh, scaled, and also Chalitza needs to play super safe before he actually gets to his one item power spike in the Triforce, where he can actually 1v1 in the side lane, so uh, it will be up to Vici Gaming to protect him as he gets to that point. Because now for V5, they've got themselves two scaling elements we talked about before, the Sona and the Tarm Kench are going to destroy if they get ahead. Uh, dangerous stuff from Beachy Gaming, but through that mid lane, through the potential of the top lane, uh, Beachy can push themselves ahead, but I'm expecting lots and lots of fights here in our, I guess, game one. I do like this as well, because Max has always been known as a saving ADC, roaming around the map. You remember him saving his mid laner as well. Vladimir, not a great early game champion, so if uh, Max manages to find his way into mid lane, that should be some good fun. We'll take a look at the comps in a second as well, Preacher. Uh, just full throttle here for Vici Gaming, it seems. The combination 
from the Jarvan, the Jax, the Lissandra. Uh, there's going to be so much chase down, so much poke here from the bottom lane of Vici as well. Dunk it down. All you need to do is make sure that Jarvan catches somebody without a dash, without a flash either. All of a sudden, com the combination between the Yumi root and also the Jax Counter-Strike to stun everybody up is too much CC to deal with. So ultimately, it will have to be up to V5 to save this summoners, to rely on Max to eat very key members and keep them safe throughout these team fights, and to retaliate once those big AoE ultimates are laid down. Well, for V5, getting off to the right foot here in game one is going to be the priority. Vici Gaming had a lead before the rematch come through, a remake, excuse me, came through. Uh, but it was going either side, so you'd have to say, you don't know who was going to win that first game, which means everything will be decided here in the series. It's taken us a while to get here again. We thank you so much for your patience, folks. We know it's been a long night so far, but we're only just beginning. We've got this series, and then Top Esports and Rogue Warriors have both had to wait for the next series to come through, both in Hong Chao tonight, both in Shanghai. And really getting tested here. The longevity of V5 Evici Gaming. That's what's on the menu. That's it. It's stamina as well. If you can sit there for that long a time and not actually get tired by the time that you enter what is technically your first game. To be fair, they got to go backstage, sit they back did. a little bit. Yep. They got to rest. Uh, that's why we had the long extended pause after the remake was confirmed. So players have had a chance to rest here. And... This would kind of tell me, well, this next game will tell me whether we do see uh, Windy still on the field, whether we see Alias come in for Mole or shifting around here for V5, because that we talked about a couple of hours ago, three hours ago, was the fact that we have, you know, some really dynamic entries here into the V5. A couple of mid laners, a couple of top laners, they shift quite frequently, and uh, that's the freshness that you need on this team. And Preacher, it looks like I'm about to do it. I'm about to get excited. Say it. Yes. Give me the words that I want to hear. We're jumping on to Summoner's Rift after three hours, rather two, of waiting to get back in. Finally, welcome back to the series and the beginning, the technical beginning, of Vici taking on V5. Good to be back. <laughs> he's getting angrier. Does not give up. The crowd is like, he's still here. I'll stop. What? Come on, guys. Okay, Every single So, time. a lot of support here for V5. Uh, excited to see that Vici Gaming have pulled out the jacks once again. Now, Preacher, we have to break down matchups like we normally do. Uh, Windy's up in this top lane again. If this just gets turned on, come on. Uh, Chalitza pops a pot and gets the grasp twice. Oh my, Windy is not going to be happy with that. And again, we see a lane swap, but this time it's from V5 as Chalitza just whacks him. And this was meant to be a really good matchup for Windy as well. But being caught at level one, this guy has nothing that he can actually do against the Jax. Like you just said, the two grass procs means that he actually wins the lane until lane uh, level number two. And remember, Transfusion is not going to be too much, even with the uh, Crimson Rush passive that comes with it. So uh, Vladimir into the top lane, struggling already against Chalitza, but they wanted a relatively easier matchup as the Camille hookshot wall shot suffers from that. You are correct. It does get turned on its head, but it's just so well played by Chalitza at the current moment. Right now, what I want to talk about is actually how the two team compositions are set up. So obviously Vici Gaming, they want to fight especially in choke points in the jungle. If Jarvan can lay down his key tactical ultimate, he can get some really nice setup for the rest of his AOE team members. Whereas for V5, you want to take a look at the uh, objective. You were control. speaking about the jungle here. Yodan goes for a very early invade up to the top side of Krugs and contesting with Ben 4. And Ben 4 loses pretty much all of them. Oh, no. <laughs> Even, Even the, the small one. ones goes to Chalitza. He picked up a couple of Krugs there. So a lot of gold over to the Jax, who was already getting the shove out in this lane. And Yodang, with his aggressive pathing earlier, can just go back to his own jungle and know that he's ahead. Uh, the most important thing about Krugs as well is the fact that you could get more experience from it. It's one of the easiest ways to rush levels over your opposing jungler. So stealing away the opposing one means that Ben 4 is going to be put in, in a really bad position. The same position that he put Yodang in in our uh, first game before the remake. Now you got to remember you're comparing the Vladimir with the Jax in the top side and Camille with the Lissandra in the mid. So another Camille mid technically here in the LPL. Uh, as this is a deep baiter's response. Raptors being the go-to, but Mole 
Level four starting to go walkabout. Yeah, I like how Mole is actually facilitating Benfall right now. Knowing that there was actually an evade on the top side of the map means that he needs to secure everything else available for Benfall, especially if nothing else experience, because that is the most precious resource coming into this game. If Jarvan can get his level six before Ben Four does, then he's going to be on the map, whereas Ben Four is still going to be farming. Well, for Ben Four now, the opportunity arises in the bottom lane. Uh, teleport coming in from Y4 and Max, and they're pushed up here, but they know the jungler's there. Arcane Shift is available. Uh, so Vici Gaming not overplaying their hand here. But even CS seems to be there across the board with a jungle difference that we talked about before. Yeah, we were also uh, hyping up the bottom lane of VG Gaming. Puff and Southwind now Puff on a very adept champion of the Ezreal, one of his main champions in the last split. However, V5 getting their hands on the Sona Time Kedge, we saw this was one of the compositions that was key to defeating Invictus Gaming. And now taking it into uh, uh, Vici. This could prove really good for Victory 5 because if you remember that quadra kill that Y4 got, he is not a newbie on the Sona. No, he's not. I want to come back to Puff though because uh, this is one of his best champions. Was he trading in the top lane? Pairs so nicely with the Yumi. Uh, that, of course, is the bottom lane. Beachy Gaming taking a quick snapshot at the runes of Chalitza who... Almost level six now, has Grasp of the Undying into the Inspiration Tree. So the Biscuits surely going to help him sustain through this lane. Now the Biscuits, but also the Corrupting Potion getting the Elixir buff as well. You saw that in the level one, and that was primarily what won his lane for him against Windy. You don't really win your lane against a Vladimir, but he bought so much room and space in order to CS all the way until his level six. I mean, 10 CS or 5 CS starts showing a winning lane to me, Preacher, that's for sure. Uh, we didn't really break down how this composition can excel, but uh, you're looking at Vici Gaming, a lot of scaling in the jacks, Jarvan, uh, a lot of team fight potential I can see here, and uh, Puff Southwind can look after themselves. Well, for V5, to me, it seems like the all-in potential is greater the longer the fight goes as well with that Sona Tarn camp. It all ramps up, and that's due to the Vladimir, but also to the Camille. If she can get her Hextech ultimatum down onto Puff, doesn't matter if you have a free uh, a free flash in your Arcane Shift. You can't use it outside of that, and all of a sudden, V5's members can just converge on you. I'm looking at Max in specific. Normally, you use that ultimate in order to rotate, but with the Hextech ultimatum, you have more than enough time to actually just get on top of somebody's head. And as we get to the late game, this V5 comp just doesn't die. You're expecting a Ravenous Hydra on the Camille. You're expecting Vladimir at two, three items to be close to unkillable unless there is that, not Avarice played, the culling, executioner's. executioner's culling, calling, whichever one it is. Uh, also look out for a Morellos from Ian. It shouldn't yeah. be a rush, but it should be a second, third item. Very true. Uh, so see how the itemization from Beachy can affect that. Uh, we're only six minutes in, though, and in this early game, which... I'm so glad we're... F I'm actually just so happy to see League of Legends. <laughs> like, man, it's like seeing you... You know, if, if you're overseas like me, you know, going back to Australia, and after four, five months, I saw my mum. And you know, I almost cried. That's what this is like right now. That's a tearjerker right fact, there. In fact, you know, seeing your mother is probably better than seeing... <laughs> see, actually, well... Ooh. Depends what audience you say that to. No, no. It's Derek. Mother was definitely better. All right. Uh, what so, are you trying to say? So it is exciting to see, especially since we're seeing Southwind and Puff just smash this lane into the corner. Uh, Whitefall has a lot of sustain, so we'll be able to heal that one back up. But every prowling projector getting worse and worse here for V5. That's the key topic. One of the best things about Yumi is that she actually doesn't allow Sona to use her Q to maximum efficiency. You usually use it to hit two champions, but she can only use it to hit one. And she's going to be building up her spell thieves a little bit slower than she would like. Oh, he is going to get ganked on now, though. Ben Ford doesn't have level six, though. Here we go oh. into the ultimate. Yep, onto himself. The counter gank comes through, and Chalitza's roamed down as well. Beachy Gaming have made the roam and Mole can't get oh. out. They get first blood, they get second blood. Beachy Gaming back with a passion. Chalitza being really fast onto the jump as well, knowing the cooldown of the uh, leap strike for Camille. Doesn't matter if she actually gets it a little bit later. He just stunned her up and she didn't actually move. And remember that Mole uh, can't see his level. He used a Hextech ultimatum before, so wasn't able to get out of that play. And I just love the interaction of Counter-Strike with hook shot and wall shot. She can't use it. She can't get out. It's a pain to deal with almost as much so as uh, Riven in the top lane. He's the engaged. final chapter comes out. Now that Sona is very low. Puff wants to burst him down, but the heal comes through. And Max saves the AD carry, as it were. 
while Puff and Southwind keep pushing in, and Ulti expended, as well as Puff's on his side. And check out the resources available for Puff, especially the mana, because he is going to be building that tier very fast. We have to watch his replay again, though. Obviously, like you said, the Hextech ultimatum is down, but Ian actually goes right back in, and this is methodical on purpose, in order to buy time for both his jungler and his top laner to come, and at this point, the damage on the Ben 4 is there. The start on Tamol is there from Shalitza as well. And we're having such a wide discussion about Yodang's early game and what it looked like against RNG. It was neutralized, it was nullified. This game, he's accelerated 1-0-1 with the Warriors enchantment already picked up, and that is a good early game Jarvan that you want to see. Plus, Chalitza making the roam down. He was already ahead in this lane. Now he has a Sheen. This Vladimir is going to hate life. And he also knows the exact purpose of his uh, role. It's just to neutralize the top lane to make sure that his turret doesn't actually lose any turret plating. Looking back over at Yodang, which you were highlighting just a second ago, the Warriors is so evident because if you take a look at all three lanes, they have the hard CC to set him up. So all he needs to do is bring some damage across. The 101 means that he's accelerated enough to do so. Before 10 minutes getting Warrior as well, that Jarvan is just going to one-hit wombo combo that bottom lane. I'm talking about Y4 here. Now, the Sona not going to be liking this if caught out of position. So, either way. The more, the most important thing about the bottom lane is actually locking down Max, not locking down Y4, because if you do, then there's no Eid available for the Sona, and then she's just squishy for the take. Remember Cataclysm now, if you can lock down both of them, Max just doesn't move with the Bower anymore. So, uh, ease ability, while they get the bottom lane Dragon, also known as the only Dragon on Summoner's Rift. Cloud, Mountain, uh, not as good as the Infernal Mountains we saw in the other first game, but still, they're building on the fact that they have the momentum, they get objective control, they've got a 1k gold lead, and it's a final chapter again in the bottom That's line. Again. Onto the time, Kent, That's an interesting true shot for us. Mm, yeah, they were rooted Weed down, but he's died. In, 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 The Glacial Path! Now he has the Frozen Tomb onto himself. Reset. Puff and South winner there. They explode onto Max, while well, Vici Gaming explode onto Summoner's Rift. That's a flash burnt out by Ian to stay alive, but they want double turret plating, and they got it. Yeah, they can even go for more. Max cannot stop this, and he hasn't got any deeps. Puff hitting the turret. This is going to be easily proxed with the spell flux. Vici Gaming still four members, or rather three down here. Ian has left. And Max trying to defend it by himself. That is so much taken by Vici off that bottom lane dive. It is, and they exploited the fact that Sona doesn't actually have any tanky stats early on. Usually it's a save potential coming out from TK, but as soon as he burns it, you can call your jungler. Huge cooldown level one, huge cooldown before you actually get your ultimate as well, so no real way for Y4 to get out of that. And Ian gets a kill as well. This is just spreading across the map for Vici Gaming. The top side is accelerated. Uh, small CS leads where you can take them by 10 in the mid lane against the Camille. Top plane Chalitza, I'm just doing the quick crossover down there. Uh, he is actually behind in CS, but that's because he's starting to make roams himself, and the wave has pushed in, so I'll take it even. Almost Trinity Force, by the way, for the Jax. Yeah, that is super scary if you are playing as Windy, because you haven't even started to bully him out, push him towards his own turret, and actually contest for his turret plating, and already he's getting to his power spike where he can actually fight you if you are actually caught outside of lane. So Windy has to call for some support. Luckily for him, Ben 4 does have both a Chilling Smite and his ultimate, both of which can absolutely destroy a Jax in a 1v2. But I think in the 1v2, uh, as soon as this Trinity Force comes through, you don't take that. Chalitza will be big, even with Cinder Hulk. We know Cinder Hulk is a late game scaling item. You know, it's, it's always been said that if you want to go for the early game, like things like Warrior is always fantastic, uh, but you're on a Sejuani, so you know what the drill is, ladies and gentlemen, while B5, the drill, Seems to be onto the Rift Herald, and Windy's able to move here as well. So this is five members for the objective. What are Vici going to take? Well, Vici are actually moving towards the mid lane. Take a look at the minimap. They're just looking straight for the turret plating. So it will be a fight between using this Rift Herald and the place they can get right now. I want to see if they commit to the top side here, because there's a lot of members. They either go mid, try and get something, but there's escape for Yodang and Ian. Uh, Rift Herald finally coming to the top side. Three members are here. Let's see what happens next. This is a very acceptable plate gank as well. TP into the top lane, mm. brings Yumi along with him. They want to contest it rather than getting that turret, then TPing in. Very early here from Vici, but they save the turret at the very least, and the Rift Herald dies. 
Uh, now Puff and Southwind have changed lanes. So normally I would say that that Rift Herald would have been very worth it if they actually used it in order to get down a full turret and then used it on the second one as well. But they used it as an exchange. And that exchange was for mid lane where they got pretty much the same amount of turret plating. So uh, not actually the maximum efficiency that uh, V5 could have played that to. Yeah, very right because at the moment Vici Gaming 3k ahead, still keeping the consistency of this lead. And Puff just gets the free farm away in this top side. He's got a Sheen, Tear, Pickaxe himself, Man Immune or Iceborne coming up next, uh, depending on what he wants to start with. But every lane from Vici, cool, calm, collected. And finally, that item power spike we were talking about for Vici Gaming as well. As cool, calm, collected as you can be, now against the Trinity Force Jax. Oh, no, this is bad. Ben 4. And he get 1v1 by the Jarvan. and the Flag and Drag is out. Arctic Assault, but that's the escape tool from Ben 4. Be careful, because Camille... Nearby. Yeah, I was about to say, this is uh, one of the worst case scenarios for the bottom lane of V5 as well, because they just rotated top lane with the play on the Rift Herald as well. But then the bottom lane of VG Gaming just teleported up. It's like, no, guys, give me a break. Come on. And uh, now it's going to get pushed here once more. Not too surprised to see V5 hovering around the bottom side, though. That's where Chalitza is. That's where they want to stop the Jacks from just farming away. Uh, but Wendy's doing the exact same thing. It's not like he's getting bullied out. So. You take the wins where you can get them right now for V5 because Beachy's still, like I said, in firm grasp of this game. Yeah, Windy, not that far behind because the kill is not actually onto him, which means that 0 0 0, he is ready for team fights as much as everybody else is. It just means that he's going to be lacking because the Triforce power spike is so strong on the Jax comparatively uh, to, the, to the dash cannon. So. In the 1v1, oh, apparently. Yeah, Preacher, you said it. There it is. Well, that, I, that's a Hema play I said out. team fights. I did not say the 1v1. I mean, you said the dash cannon is not as powerful. Well, yep. it's going to help him clear waves while uh, mid turret, rather top turret, goes down from V5. Able to push against Ian. These lane assignments have changed up yet again. They most certainly have. And it usually does benefit Vici Gaming wherever they place their bottom lane because it is just catch up duty from V5. None of them can really defend the lane. So what they do is they actually opt to change the uh, the bot lane to another one that doesn't oppose the Ezreal Yumi. But that doesn't leave a very good taste for either of the solo laners of V5 either because they can't hold it uh, in their own rights. Uh, so Vici, while this goes on, Preacher, another dragon to be taken down. This time it's a mountain. Thank you. Close enough. Yep. There, you, there we go. Infernal now. We're just running through them, it seems, here in game one. It's a good set. The first one, not so much, but they got it because they had firm control of this Dragon Pit. And if you take a look at where the wards are placed, especially the Vici Gaming, a lot of uh, focus down onto that Dragon Pit. It is going to be a constant place and source of, uh, of stats for Vici Gaming. You'd have to think as well with the composition that Vici Gaming have, like an Infernal is beautiful, but Mountain, the ability to uh, poke out, uh, maybe towards this neutral objective, maybe Baron, you can be optimistic about what they can use the dragons for because it is still a very versatile team. It is, and you can use it for either busting down these turrets because you got uneven members trying to weigh it down. If they're trying to, if uh, v, uh, v5, sorry, are trying to race you for it, you uh -huh. win that one as well. It feels bad for Chalitza. All right, second attempt. By the way, he's absolutely destroying everything he touches. Uh, that's a BF sword in the inventory of the Jacks. Early GA as well. That's the call. Well, I'm going to say this, Preacher. It's most likely, as the normal build has been, it's going to be the Spear of Shoujin. Uh, two item jacks, as big as the two item Renekton. Remember, Counter Strike every half a second. Something crazy. It's like one. But you know what I'm saying. You use anything, you use your ulti as well. No, I mean, you have to yeah. use your ulti. That's yeah. why you do it. Right? But I'm saying you use the Counter Strike first. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, at, at, at the moment, Vichelita in a very good position. Again, talking up the Jax matchup into the Vladimir. They're finally paired back up into the top side, and Yodang is nearby. We already saw what this matchup has in tail, and now with the Jarvan as well, Windy, you better get He's out of waiting it. for the Hema Plague. Now, Yodang is juggling aggro while the turret goes down. Now for Windy, he's going to get the Crimson Rush. The Hema Plague comes out third, gets the Transfusion. Chilitra at half health. Hasn't popped the ulti just yet. Yeah, I was about to see the rotation that was coming around, but it was just Southwind compared to Y4. Y4 is extremely farmed right now. So that could have actually swung in the way of V5, but not opting to take Ooh, the fights. Crowley projector. I thought Chalita wanted in. Max distance. Uh, it does a little bit more the slowing element of sun to build up here for the Yumi. Almost said Nico. Uh, support. And Puff left mid again. Now the roaming cat versus the roaming catfish. 
Max oh, no the put the pressure on. They come in for the flank. Great passing here from Ben 4, but they eat him up. Max gets the AD carry while the rest of V5 come on in. And Max underneath Thor is going to get stunned down with a crescendo to help them out. The glacial path not taken by Ian. And V5 walk away for the one from one trade onto the AD carry. Very fortunate of Ben 4 to be walking around that area. As soon as he saw that Puff used his E to poke down with his W in conjunction as well, immediately went for the game because there's no way the Ezreal can get out. No flash on him either. Puff just died. And it means that for V5, still favorable trade when they're so far behind. They are 3k gold behind still, but getting Puff and getting a kill onto, unfortunately, Max. Yep. Uh, is good news, and I love the creative passing here from Ben 4. Yeah, Ben 4 was just around the area, and he managed yeah, to get it. Done. What we don't actually see in this replay was the fact that uh, there was actually the RK ship forward, which prompted the entire fight. Crescendo onto Jalitza and Ian. Saved the re-engage uh, by V5. So, if that ult didn't come out, I fear that Vici Gaming would have just clubber knuckered them. Club enough. Yeah, I, I, I think a club enough you was are worth going for. You are inventing new words. I here. really am. It's good that I'm with you, Preacher, because if it was with Raz, he would shame me. <laughs> I am shaming you right now. No, no, no. I do not tolerate no, no, no. uh, You're not right. It's, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I might get absolutely uh, ridiculed tomorrow, but that's a very different day. Who cares about tomorrow? If we can make it yeah. to tomorrow, I'd Man, be very happy. I'll tell you what, tonight, we're making it to, we're making it to midnight. Let's I think do we're going to conflict. I don't care. Let's do it. Uh, all right. Well, it's not really your choice, the team's choice, but sure, let's do it anyway. Uh, with V5, though, I need to bring to attention that we have a Knight's Vow on Ben 4. Now, early itemization here, Ben 4 has a lead in the jungle in CS. The only thing that's keeping it e even is that Yodang has the kill to his name. So, BF Sword versus a Knight's Vow as a second item. It's going to be pretty big. It's very interesting as well, because there are realistically two targets that you can put it on. You can either put it onto Windy, or you can put it onto Mole. It's on Windy. Yeah. It's on, because it's not on Sona. Which means that they anticipate the I don't the think he put Whoa. it on yet. That's a crescendo. Puff just arcane shifts away. Early to the chase is Jodan comes in for the flank, but has he come too early? The Cataclysm down. Jodan gets destroyed. Oh, no. Mistake from Vici Gaming as they come on down fast with the Glacial Prison. Puff trying to poke them out for the re-engage. Yeah, Jodan just delivered himself into five members. If you take a look, Chalitza was in the top lane. No TP either. Uh, now for the re-engage from Benfall once again. Puff still able to arcane shift out of there, so safety for now. But that True Shot Barrage does not clear the wave. And why for? With the rest of the team, they want to charge. Yes, and V5, they are pushing this, this pick to the max. And knows that Jax won't be there either. Oh, Ian gets the ultimate down onto Max. So the re-engage once again, a messy game, it seems. Just the way I like it. V5 running for their lives. Six kills, 20 minutes, yeah, but uh, Vici want to make it more. And already you can see that Y4 is getting to the point in which Sona is becoming a nuisance. Her W healing up Max to the point where these picks cannot actually happen. The shielding is real and it is very well on the map. That's what happens when you have a Seraph's Embrace and wait, oh hold the boy. Early Baron begins. Here it is, Y4 is here. 3K Everybody else teleports him. in. They're going to go for it. The 50 50 to come through. They get the Baron, but for Vici Gaming, they lose Puff straight off the bat while turning on to Y4, who's so darn squishy. Hectic Ultimatum, Windy into the backside, flashes on in. Hema Plague, he's going to get Ian as well, while the rest of E5 clean them up. Naughty, naughty doing Baron without us. Why would you be doing that so early into the game? It was nice because there was no vision over there, so you could commend them on that one. However, V5 immediately collapsing. Max had his spidey sense of singling. Wait a second. The timer is over 20 minutes, and he plays the control ward. This trade's not going to be worth it. You get 1,500 gold naturally from Baron, but what is the cost? In a turret in the mid lane, along with that out of that drop moments ago, V5 get everything they needed. Opening up the mid lane. Getting your two side laners going. V5 going to have happy thoughts. More importantly, take a look at where the kills went on to Y4 as well. We have to watch out for his performance. Doesn't quite have crescendo, but it doesn't even matter. Woo! Because he catches out Puff, and you can see the debuff of Baron amplifying his magic damage. That was a very nice save coming out from his support to even keep him alive. And a Yurang on the backside doesn't even matter because Sona could just heal herself up to full. Mole flew himself forward. I heard a flash. Maybe that was just in the replay. Hang on, let me have a quick look. No, never mind. Hold that, hold that thought. Excuse hold it. me. Uh, it is Spirit Shojin second, by the way, Preacher. It's item update time. GA there for Yodang is second. Proto Belt, Ludens Echo, normal for the Lissandra mid. But the biggest matchup, well, the biggest thing I need to point out here is technically the matchup. The Vladimir, who fell behind, who is in a good position now after that fight, picking up a kill. And a Rabadon's Ooh. Death Cap second. 
Like, screw anything else. Let's just go straight to the big witch's hat. Beautiful. Also gives him that bonus little bit of HP as well. This Vladimir is team fight ready. I thought that he was team fight ready as soon as he got a second item, but now with that as well, and also the 10% CDR from the Fiendish, it's good to go. It's so hard to kill Windy here. Do we have a sword in the inventory? No, we do not. But we have ourselves an alt in the back Ooh. line. It's BG Gaming forcing the issue. Two-man crescendo as well with the catnip. Sending it out of the bag. That's the Camille. Caught in the middle. And Mole drops first. As the rest of BG Gaming sent Chalitza into the front line. The Jax takes it. But no! Ooh. A four-man Hemoplague. Windy comes in and says, Is there a breeze in here? I just opened the damn door. That was awesome coming out from Windy. It was a little bit late, but better late than never. And putting all members of VG Gaming onto the back foot, pretty much killing everybody on the spot as well. You have to say, in each one of these fights, they look so good at the start for VG Gaming, especially because Yodang just ultimates from the beginning. Doesn't even QE, just presses the R button so everybody else on his team can catch up. But then the question slowly starts to creep in. What happens if Windy gets here? Who CCs Windy? And the answer Ooh. was nobody does. Yeah, it's the LPL. All right, let's just fight again. Max going to jump on this blast cone. He doesn't quite get over, but that's enough to get him out. Uh, Chalita really searching for blood after that last fight. And to reiterate there, while we have a look at the replay, this was Beachy's fight. Watch Yodang, doesn't even QE, straight on to Max to make sure the Y4 can't be eaten up. The turret gets taken down, which is crucial with Beachy Gaming going forward. But keep your eye on the minimap, because here comes Windy. And then he gets into the entire fight. Woo! Everybody down with the Hemo Plague as well. And that is clean up duty. It really is. Observers like, holy moly, wait, there's a game going on. Uh, V5 clawback, the majority of that gold lead through that single play as well. 1,000 now in the bank, the difference. And the rest of Vici Gaming after that have to claw at their heads, scratch and go, oh, well, we need to make sure that doesn't happen again because Yodank lost his GA. The safety of the Jarvan going in first is now nullified. Okay, now check out the item power advantage that we have for... Uh, especially V5 coming out strong in that last fight. You've got Vladimir now on two kills instead of one, and also you've accelerated Y4 to the point where he's not actually fearing for his life in the middle of these, because you can see that the strategy for VG Gaming isn't actually to all target Y4, it's to lock down Max to make sure that Max can't actually eat Y4 and protect him. So they are going to finally find the original partner of his lane that he never got to verse. Uh, behind a level is Mole, but Ben4 coming in here, they don't know Yodang's behind. Spot him out with a ward. Is he just going to disappear? Yodang over the wall. TP though. Oh, Mole's actually going to come in. Hextech ultimate and the Jarvan can't really dunk. V5 take him out with a flick of the wrist and a swish and flick from the catnip as well. We come in with a two-man, three-man book. But unfortunately, Ian in the middle of the fight, this is the turnaround. We need to see Puff get the damage down, but the Vladimir heals up once again. Now for Puff, they're so darn low. He Can wants he to do take it? it, he finds one. one. Onto Max, the Prowling Projector oh! finds the other. He wants Mole. Puff has an Arcane Shift in 3, 2, 1. But that's it. Good turnaround here from Puff and Southwind. Never thought I'd see them make the fight. Still great from Puff to actually avoid most of the damage coming out from Windy when he engaged. So all in all, it was the bottom lane of each Gaming that narrowly pulled it out. It was the top side of the map for their team, though, who were caught in that instance. And it was primarily from diving too deep, trying to find a play when they themselves were played, and also Max with the ulti to collapse onto them. Yeah, it was good from both sides. And I know that's just a bit of a cop-out, but... Uh, V5 are genuinely finding great windows to take the engages off the back of Mole's hard on. As soon as Yodang goes in there, you know that Max is going to TP with Y4 as well, but then all of the TPs get called and everybody joins in. Watch for Puff's position, especially against Windy, because Windy tries to get the Hero Plague onto him, and as soon as he does, immediately ease out, so that no extra damage follows that, so practically nothing coming out from Windy, and then he's just on cleanup duty. I think for Vici Gaming, Ian was so crucial to that fight. My god, the damage came out of nowhere. Certainly, Lissandra, a big element to play with here. But Puff and Southwind got the respect they deserved in the end. Everyone backs out from V5, but not before they take two to the death with the rest of their Vici gaming members. It's going to get worse and worse. Right now, for Vici, still holding the gold lead, but only slight. I say that because look at Windy, look at the Jacks. Chalitza trailing him right now, but. I don't think Mole wants this 1v1 this just yet. I'm going to say it's very brave coming for out now, from Mole. For yeah. now, I think that GA makes a difference, though. Uh, the, the fact that he's playing so close to his turret as well is providing that le extra level of security. But we just need to watch for who can actually deal with the Jacks. Oh, maybe two of them can. Windy comes in. Unfair 1v1. 
I think Mole was starting to take him down anyway. So now that Chalice is dead, 45 seconds, a big TP out of the game. Yeah, Vinci Gaming. They are now on the back foot, and V5 realistically should be setting up for these objectives. No Dragon, but there is a Baron available, and all you could do is shove out the mid lane and then move straight to there. Death Stack. BG Gaming still delaying it though. Got the mid shove now from V5. They start making the journey across to the big old purple worm in in position. It's interesting because this is reminiscent of what happened in the previous game as well. The two solo laners of V5 catching out the split push, and now it's Chalisa. Here's the Baron, but though. Here's the problem. If V5 pull off, they've got the bottom lane, Camille, still pushing in, who has TP. They can play this out, and Beachy Gaming have to make the call. They can, and this is the most dangerous part. Mole is going to be such a huge asset within this. There's already a back coming out from Ian. No TP from My him. My god. He's just taken two turrets down in 30 seconds. That's what happens when you have the Triforce. Now we've got to keep our eyes once more on the Baron area because it was a double back from the double mid uh, from the double solo laners of VG Gaming. They are losing out on this uh, rotation play in V5, catching them for the better. They really are. So V5 takes stock of Mole. Uh, feels like he's going to be very crucial in this next fight. GA now picked up. and Look at that Baron. Well, you're having a look on the screen. That's right. It's the Baron buff minus 2,000 for VG Gaming. Because now V5 have taken the lead comfortably. 1,400 gold for what seems like the first time in this game. And they've got an Infernal as well, so it's not like in the scaling game they miss out. But really, with the composition in hand as well. This is the definition of Empiric victory. You get the Baron buff, but you lose so much more. Not only do you lose the fight afterwards, but also the turrets. And V5 are in firm control of the wave pressure on all of these uh, side lanes. Take a look at top lane in specific. That is going to be pushing towards Vici Gaming. And all of this has to be weighing down in about 30 to 1 minute time. But I want to look at the bottom lane, because Windy's still shadowing Mole. This has been the go-to for the past 3 to 4 minutes. If Chalitza goes for the 1v1 with... Uh, Steric Gage, when he finally gets it, which seems like the back timing is there. Then Mole going in for the fight is definitely needed. So smart shadowing, smart rotations here from V5 to bring us into this mid to late game. Yeah, but check out the mid lane. This is definitely volatile, and anybody could engage this in a second's notice, especially because Vici Gaming, if they play way too aggro and use an arcane shift, that is the go button. Uh, with Luden's Echo as well, I might add. There, there is a needlessly large rod in Puff's inventory. Now, not only did he go Trinity Force this game, which is always, yeah. you know, balls to the wall. The three item Ezra with QSS has an abyssal large rod. Here it is And again. now, Chalitza, let's see how you're going oh. here. In the 1v2, the Hemet play comes through. He needs to outplay. He gets the win strike. Sends up with a counter strike, but Mole, not even the GA pop. Windy is just too strong right now in the 1v2. Second time around, and Vichy Gaming are not capitalizing on the fact that they have more members around the mid lane. Don't actually want to take that fight. Now they are going to lose it massively. Check it out once more. Mole still has TP. They can go for exactly the same play. Just bait out the Baron. You're right, Preacher. They can't get on top of the time catch. The Sona, the uh, big piggy is Ben 4. Still able to take all the damage. Doesn't really matter about the Prowling Projectile. Meanwhile, Camille on the bottom side. Oh, this Beachy is need an answer because Chalitz is not up in 30 seconds. And take a look at this. They're immediately going in. They have to split their focus. Holy V5. They have so much control in this game. They can keep doing the Baron. And Vici is split like a bunning snag. Do it! Now all you need to do is pull the trigger. There is still the TP, so watch out for that. So that big TP is finally Mole coming in the fight. 5M is committing to Baron while the inhibitor is being broken in the bot side. Going down quickly, Yodang wants the steal, but Max flashes over the wall. Can he get there? He's devoured oh, up. They're going to rush it down. The cat comes in again, and Southwind with the final chapter doesn't land it, but the GA gets popped by Yodang while Chalita jumps in. The Jacks want a two-man counter-strike. He gets one onto Y4, who gets devoured up himself. Chalita can't do much in the back. The Jacks is everything, but he's going to drop, and B5 now can go front to back. Mole jumps in again. Uppercut to the face, and B5 turn this game into theirs. Beachy Gaming for the hills, they run. Puff launched oh. on Southwind on the right side of the wall, but Ben 4 knows the way to get over that. Good night, and goodbye to Beachy in game one. You do not put Mole into a corner. Take a look at that. Even though he was so far behind, he managed to pull it back. After what was a very long wait, V5 coming out with the audacity to smack down Beachy. A remake recharged. Game one is all V5 will talk about. And it is all on the table for them in the very first game. That was such smart play from the uh, from the macro perspective. The fact that Camille was set bottom lane because she has TP. Abusing the fact that the solo laners of Vici Gaming do not 
have TP and always forcing the Baron, always forcing uh, the split push in the bottom lane as well. Eventually, Moore managed to break the base and even took an inhibitor for himself. It was GG at that point onwards, and the Baron was just the icing on top of the cake to finish off the series. Very impressed with how V5 played the end of that game, and that's the team that beat Invictus Gaming, uh, making short work. And look, the versatility in this roster cannot be underestimated. It was smart play as well. And you have to say from the early game, it went so far towards Vici Gaming's favor. They got the lead. They got three kills for themselves on Chalitza, Yodang, and Ian respectively. And they just weren't able to push that lead. A little bit of hubris coming out from Vici Gaming. Chalitza was always off on a side lane because why not? He's a Jackson, he's fed. But all of a sudden, Mol and Windy as well, catching him 2v1. Doesn't matter how fed you are. Much better performance there from Windy on the flight of me. Held out in the lane. Chalitza bullying him out early, but kept up and CS and eventually got to that late point. It's like, well, I'd rather have the Vladimir on my team because Chalitza it was so much disengaged from V5. There was one job for Chalitza to really hit on, and that was getting into the entire team and getting a three, four, or five man counter strike. Did not actually manage to find that within the game. Always yep. found within the side lane, and that was ultimately his demise. He never used the gold lead that he crewed early. Yeah, well, Preacher, I gotta say, after what has been a, you know, really really long time coming. I think that game one delivered. Like, that yeah. was a long way, but let me tell you, the game one was delivered. And you wouldn't normally expect it. I mean, people Terrible. were saying, looking at the uh, looking at the standings as well, but yeah. throw all of that out the window because that uh, that first game, it was so methodical coming out from V5 as well. I mean, especially the late game with the push, you cannot overrate that. So I, I want to start breaking down a little bit further as to that top lane Camille, rather mid lane Camille in the end. Uh, Mole had what we were expecting at the start of the split, the carry potential in this team, and that game was all about him in the end. He also had a lot of fortitude because he fell down 0-2 at the start and you yeah. were thinking maybe this guy doesn't have a strong part to play in the team fights because your Hextech ultimatum pushes other people out. But what he did was he just found himself in the side lane over and over again. Yep. And it doesn't matter if you're behind with all of these 1v1s. If you 1v0, you're going to be taking that in here. 1v0, yeah. yeah in, in PVE in the end it was because it was is just out of lane getting bullied out by Mole. Uh, getting bullied out by Windy, sorry. So there's good synergy between the two solo laners as well. There is, yeah. It's nice to see them playing together. If either of the two are behind, just 2v1, gang up on them and use your TP advantage. But it wasn't, wasn't a fact that they're behind as well. Chalitza getting more and more farm. You're like, well, this can't happen. We need to shove him out of lane. And the Camille and Vlad, like, unkillable in that 2v1. It was dangerous watching, watching Chalitza early in the 1v1s yep. in the laning phase because you were thinking a Jax pushing into a Vladimir. This is insane. And then he got his Triforce. You were like, wow, if nobody checks this guy, he is actually just going to run away with the game. But yep. fortunate for V5, they did. And they also used their safety with the other members of uh, the team to make sure that Max could always save the other members yep. to never actually fight on the other parts of the map. So very smart play. This is a good ending from V5. Great way to end game number one. We're going to have a short break. And yes, it's going to be very short this time, don't worry. Then go into game two with our hearts wide open. We'll be right back. They're Dive really pose. aggressive for this one. Let's see if Post can get a perfect repost. He has flash available, it's nope. not gonna land. Flawless duet will get the stun. Post now has the grand challenge issued onto Gimgoon, but it's not gonna matter. The heal's gonna land. Gimgoon a little bit of trouble. Oh. He will get taken down. Post once again with the mechanical outplay survives. And now Mystic gonna be chasing down onto Joinbee. FTX have bit off way more than they can chew. They lose two. He is definitely the low point of the team. B5 are committing to this Baron, and Windy does it so far. It does it so damn fast. One Mountain Dragon, they flash on top of Lucas. They're gonna find him, they get the slow down. The flash over the wall to be safe as Alien comes in. Max is there, the Shy with a four-man ultimate. Windy finally ults himself. Is the Yasuo gonna be able to carry back the fight? Because IG somehow have the numbers advantage onto Jackie Love. Windy's hitting him, oh, he goes there again. It's Yasuo, I have a bloody key. Windy sends it all out. 2,000, 1,000, Dominus there, Scout, Mako, they can't steal it, the Shy who secures it, but 
the Cosmic Radiance into the middle. Jinu can't get the kill before it comes down. Now for EDG to have to deal with the Sona who just killed like oh, bloody no, no tomorrow. Scout in the middle of the smoke screen wants to find the pick. They lock down one in the back of the pit. The Shy takes a beam. But as JJ comes in, they still can't kill the Rise. Who's starting to free far away? High boy and Ning, you watch on the side. You also watch the Shy because he's still alive, damn it. Ning has his time in the back, the Shy in the front, and really it's just party all over. A bloodier game, a bloodier series here, Raz, as Ning is going in for the counter gank to the bottom lane. He's going to be spotted out. Is Bellshield there? Early heal coming up here from iBoy. He's saving it. He gets Light Binder down. Ning going for the dive. iBoy almost outplayed. But eventually the healing comes through from Ning. Well, double TP as well. Four versus three. Jinu gets the three man. Whoa. He knows he has the damage, but of course, he needs more time. Aurelia is going to jump on him. So Galio Ultimate needed to come through another fight. FPX, they're taking the fight four versus five. They think they can take it. Wong Guy Solo, oh. Pop Blossom comes in. He's gonna land on the LWX with the assassination from Gim Goon. Tien still here frontlining like his life depends on it. And they will be able to trade one for one for the time being. Killer Instant comes in from LWX, Gim Goon as well. Haro has to go golden. That should be the kill onto at least one of them. Gim Goon has to flash out, but LWX, so much damage! Oh. The Quadra kill and LWX is gonna be so happy with that one. The ace comes down and FBX may have found their 2-0.